Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed. The subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Can you hear me? <laughs> I hope you can hear me. Let's see. I might have to unmute this. Let's see. I'm in the future, so I, I can't hear myself yet. Let's see. I'm waiting for the... Um... Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, you can hear me. Okay, cool. All right, so here's the deal. I saw that there was an update, a Windows update, and I was like, oh no. And they update a lot, and I swear, like every fifth time, it really messes with something on the stream. Now I have that weird thing. Remember when temporarily you could hear me when I was doing those, like the things you just watched, you could hear me, like giggling and stuff? Um, that's back. So... I don't know, I'll, I'll work on it later, but at least I have it fixed for now. And you can, you can hear it over here too, right? So, okay, cool. All right. All right, so thanks for refreshing, coming back. Um, hi, Ray and Dar, Nicole, Susu, Julia, Janie, I haven't seen you <laughs> before, so welcome and thanks for trying it out again. Hi, Terry, Lydia, Megan, Beverly, Ursula, Lynn, Malin, hello, you guys are all so, you're here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Can I see all of chat right now? Yeah, I can, okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna kinda get right into it. So let me know if there's any sound or visual stuff you want different. Um, notice that there's a um, coupon for the chino pants that we're making today by Wardrobe by Me. Is that too, it's not too big, right? You can read it, but it's not too big, right? So, hi, Martina. So, um, I think I'm going to try and sew these all the way through. Hi, YouTube, Brian. how's it going? Welcome. So, um, I'm gonna sew these all the way through, which kind of means I'm gonna be going, I'm gonna try and just go. And it's gonna be kind of a, hi, wardrobe by me. Oh, thanks for saying hi, and thanks for coming. Sorry if you kind of had to suffer through my sound glitch. Um, things happen. Hi, Sue from the UK. Hello from California. It is 86 degrees here. Not too hot yet. Uh, the afternoons are hotter. So, <laughs> so um, all right. So I'm kind of going to do this straight through. I'm not kind of. I'm going to do this straight through, I think. I kind of wanted to do it because 
I thought, you know what, I probably could do this all the way through. And, and then I was like, uh, I don't know. And honestly, I'm doing it because I feel like I gotta make up to you guys for making the cargo shorts take so long. Hi, Esther, welcome, welcome. And partly because it wouldn't be a bad thing for me not to stream on Saturday. I I'm sorry about that, but I'm just, we're just getting ready for a lot of stuff next week with my daughter moving. We're having a going away party and stuff like that. So I kinda wanna be available for that. Plus I'm making up one of my Patreon Zooms on Saturday. And then I started thinking about it more and more and I was like, I love the idea of doing this straight through, kind of like when we did the ginger jeans as a speed run, you know? So I think that, um, but what I wanna say first is that I don't ever advocate sewing fast. Like I don't think you have to sew as fast as possible. Um, I'm not about that. I do that a lot. I do sew pretty fast and that is kind of how I came about in my sewing like training and stuff is how to sew efficiently and quickly. But um, it's not that I think you have to do that as a home sewist at all. Like at all, you, I truly, like I would much rather my projects took longer so I was just sewing for longer because I like the process a lot. Um, but my, my sewing training is a mix of production style sewing and I like doing things pretty efficiently. So there's nicer ways to finish things. And I do kind of a mix of that. So that's kind of my disclaimer. I'm not advocating you speed run sewing. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a lens and your neighbor. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's get to it. So pretty much these sew very, very similarly to the cargo shorts. They're gonna be simpler to sew. Um, and for me, they're gonna be simpler because it's less heavy duty fabric. I'm hoping that this fabric you can see really well. I'm using this very lightweight denim very very lightweight it looks black here and it looks black to me but then when i play around with my phone settings i can tell that it is a blue thread i'll be using the serger today as well um i don't think i don't have the seam allowance to do flat felled or french seams so you're going to see me use the serger so if you don't have a serger i would just recommend using some sort of finishing stitch as well uh, if you were doing this in a nice fabric, you might even consider binding the seam allowances. I know you probably are just like, no. So, hi Libby, I'm on. Yeah, yeah, I had a little sound thing. It, does, it feels like my chair just went low, but I don't know. Uh, because of the Windows update, it disabled my audio, so. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I was thinking too. I've already learned, right? Uh, the only thing I noticed differently is the notches are a little different for the um, pocket facing for the back pockets. And I mean, obviously the fly and the waistband are different because it's not a waist facing. But this is gonna be easier for me because I'm not gonna make that big error. We're not gonna tell wardrobe by me about, cause hopefully she didn't watch that video. <laughs> All right, so the first step we're gonna do is the belt loops. I even wrote myself a cheat sheet. I do this pretty often when I wanna sew something I've never sewn before really quickly. I go through and I write myself a cheat sheet and I just have it magnetized to the front of my machine because my machine is metal, so it helps. Um, and sometimes you'll see it even in videos because it's, it's right here. This is a little note from my daughter right here and it's, it's just right there. So then I can refer to it. Like when I'm recording a video, a complete sew through, there's a, a sheet like that somewhere in the vicinity so that I can look at it. Generally I do this because for the most part now that I've been streaming for three years, I try and go in the same order as the pattern. We all know I don't do that all the time. And if I were to sew these not in the same order, what I would do is I would sew the fronts, sew the backs, and then I would sew the two together uh, so this is, uh, this is great if I have a cheat sheet here so I can kind of stay in the same order as the pattern. So, all right, so I'm gonna overlock these belt loops first. I'm just gonna overlock one, down one side. Where's my little scissors? Oh, here they are. Oh, now they're on the floor. The floor, I don't know where my cutter is on my new machine. <laughs> All 
Okay, how's that look? I'm just looking at my, I have my phone over here. I my, this is a water bottle, by the way. It's a reminder that I need to refill my iron because I used up all my steam ironing on all the interfacing before I started. Little did I know I had a whole sound thing going on. That's what I should have been working on, right? Hindsight. <laughs> all right, hi Nicole. Yeah, they are classy. How many Michaels do we have in the chat or as partners of people in the chat? <laughs> There's a lot of them. <laughs> I love it. I don't even have my machine. Oh, I do, I do. I'm just gonna test so a little bit and make sure everything's doing good. Oh, you know what? I need to switch my needle. Sorry, you guys. I have a size 14 in there and I want a 16. Do I want a 16? I kind of want a 16. I'm very comfortable with a size 16 needle. It's just kind of, it's just like, I really like it. I feel very secure and safe with a size 16 needle on my machine. I'm not saying you need to sew it with a 16 needle. It's just me. Yeah, right, Esther? Esther, I know. I um, had this little picture here. You probably see it in older videos. It was this funky little teapot my mom had given me. And to be honest, it was pretty ugly. And she was just like, oh, I saw it at a thrift store and it has chickens on it. You know, my last business was chicken boots. So everyone thought I needed everything with chickens on it. And she likes rescuing things from places like that. And I was like, oh, this is great. I'll use it to fill my, my iron. But it broke and then it broke beyond using it. So I'm using this glass water bottle and I'm going to tell you guys full disclosure. My husband works for a water bottle manufacturer and briefly I for like a year and a half I thought I was allergic to metal because they do metal water bottle. He works for Clean Canteen and um, um, I thought I had this metal allergy. It turns out it was something else and so I, he bought me a, a glass water bottle from a competitor because he was like, you know, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta make sure you're okay. It was really sweet. So I don't use it anymore. And so I thought this was perfect. Now I can use it here. So yeah. Oh, you know, James, I think that's a great idea. You know, in fact, if my cover stitch were threaded in blue, I would actually give it a shot. I think it's a good idea. I think it just depends on how wide you put your cover stitch. I would put it at its wider setting. You, I wonder, like, you would iron it. Let's iron this. Let's iron this. Sorry, I'm off to a really bad start. <laughs> what are the pros and cons, Janie? Um, you know, the thing is, I use an industrial machine and my machine is calibrated for a size 16. It wants to sew at a size 16 needle. There are people in the chat that have the exact same machine as mine and I, I imagine it, theirs aren't calibrated for that size needle. And that just means that the timing is more suited for that size needle. I sew on a size 14 with no problems as well. So I think it's just really a comfort thing and I think honestly, a size 14 is completely adequate with this fa fabric that I'm doing today. I sewed so much in um, heavy duty stuff for so long that the idea of a size 14 needle just kind of makes me a little nervous still. If there's no reason for me to be nervous, you know, so. And, um, you know, like the other things I will say about using a bigger needle is that I'm creating a bigger hole. So it depends on what fabric you're using. Okay, last time I did these, I did a really bad job. So let's just hope for a better job today. Let's hope I can do a nice even stitch. So if you have a lighter weight fabric and maybe the needle, like it's a less forgiving fabric, you know, like, like poplins, they're pretty unforgiving, those crisper fabrics. You're gonna see that needle hole a little bit. But, and really what it's gonna look like is that the thread is kind of swimming in the hole. You know what I mean? Like it's just not, um, yeah, it's just too, the hole's too big for the thread. You can, you can increase the weight of your thread. I use a heavier weight thread anyway, but you can't tell really that it is. Ooh, 
You're not even going to see how bad my stitching this time is because the it just matches. Great. <laughs> you know, and, and last time I used two strands of thread because I wanted the stitching to show nicely. So, all right, so let's put the belt loops at the bottom of the bin here. So now we're going to put our front pockets together. I have this really like random assortment of pocket fabrics because for some reason I just wasn't prepared with pocket fabric. Um, and they're all fabrics I designed, so they're just like samples I have laying around that I haven't, I don't know, that I'm having qualms about, you know, so. Yeah, you're welcome, no, no problem. I know that's probably kind of confusing that I'm just like, I need a 16 needle. I don't need a 16 needle. All right, so we're gonna put the uh, pocket facing. Wait, did I just do this wrong? I just did this wrong. Shoot, this is not a finished edge here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was sewing this like you normally do, but um, this is a different style pocket. Whoops. If this were stouter fabric and not the fabric it is, I could probably just rip this, but I know this fabric would rip. Some of them just do, you know, so you gotta be careful. What we're doing on this step right here is we're finishing the pocket facing to this edge here. And I'm also doing this on the wrong side right now. I need to get my head, I need to get my head in order. Yeah, this is, this is the big dot one right here. All right, so the other thing I'm gonna do is, the way, the way I like my pockets to be is I like the print to show when you look inside the pant, and so we're gonna sew it that way. You might want your hand to see the print of the fabric, and mine is the different. It is there? Oh, good, Lynn. Well, I guess, I guess good. You checked? That's so funny. You really did like it. That makes me feel good. <laughs> So you can overlock this edge and then top stitch it down. You can do this little trick I'm gonna do, which means I'm going to, um, first of all, I'm gonna trim this interfacing here. This interfacing was really hard to fuse. It's partly also why I was a little bit late. I'm just going to notch the part where I want it to line up so I'm notching about a quarter of an inch in to this, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line up that notch there at the top and the bottom at the seam line. And then I can get this nice clean finish. I like this serger finish too though, to be honest. I just am always trying to give options if you don't have a serger. I'm just lightening up the pressure of my presser foot. Remember when I cranked it down the other day? <laughs> I'm feeling it. All right, and so then now when I press this over, I have a nice clean edge. This does create a little bit of, of bulk right here. But because you're doing it on a pocket lining, in general, you probably won't have many issues. I did this on the cargo pocket and it didn't create much bulk at all, but it is something to think about. All right, and so now this is finished. Drink. <laughs> Starting it off right with the good old fashioned rip. All right, so I'm just lining it up. If you just overlock this edge or zigzagged it, you can just top stitch it down. This stitching doesn't show to the outside. So what I do here is I just kind of, I don't know, just give my little, you know, overlap. This is kind of a cheaty way to do that. So, all right, get it in there and then I'm just gonna line it up at the top here. Make sure it's nice and flat though. 
because then you can do a nice straight line and it'll definitely show. You, you don't want any, um, you know, curves <laughs> and something like that. Ironing at first makes it a little easier. Especially with the interfacing. I didn't use interfacing on the cargo pockets because the fabric was so thick. This time I am, and it doesn't make the fabric too thick, but the fabric doesn't bend as easily with this style of interfacing. There's something about it that just kind of makes it kind of um, boingy, you know? You could, James, yeah. You could, but I honestly think that the bulk isn't that bad. I have a little bit of, um, you can see a little bit of, can you see that? It'll be okay though. All right, so we have those two. And then the um, next step is we're gonna add the facing here to the opening. So this is where the palm of your hand, you know, goes into the pocket. So the palm of your hand sees this, oh my gosh. I'm bound to do this with the wrong side of the fabric showing. It's kind of one of my things that, you know how you have that, just that one thing that just no matter what, it always confuses you. This is the one for me. It's the same thing. I feel like this is the one that's more apt to show. You know, like if someone pulled something big out of their pocket, this is gonna pull out a little bit. Big deal though, right? You're not supposed to be seeing inside the pockets. But yeah, if you're concerned about bulk, I wouldn't even do this step. I would just um, overlock it or zigzag that edge and then just stitch it down flat. I think that that is a completely acceptable way to do it. I guarantee that um, you know a few of you are wearing jeans right now and if you look in their, your pocket, that's exactly how they did it. I'm just looking at my bobbin. I thought I ended, but I just got, I just stitched inside the um, notch a little bit. Oh, really, Sydney? Did you get closer? It's pretty cool. Let's iron this, these first this time. Good catch, right? I know. <laughs> oh, you'll see a lot of good catches. You'll see a lot of not caught at alls around here. <laughs> All right, this notch, not that notch. Don't get confused. There are notches on this pattern piece, so don't, you know, start looking at this one way over here, which for me, I added this notch right here. This is the top stitch line to define the space of the pocket bag so that your hand can't go all the way to the center front. All right, let's iron this time. I wonder if we could, uh, there's a clever way we could. Uh, I mean, I guess you could press the seam open like that. It's kind of interesting. And then when you press it on it back on itself, yeah, that doesn't seem to improve that very well, actually. I think from ironing from this side. So you know, it, actually, James, you might have you, you might be onto something because can you see this little bit of a ridge I'm getting here? Like I said, this woven interfacing, it's it's like, I mean, you can see. Look at how straight and flat it is, it's pretty opposed to bending. Whereas I feel like the non-woven, you're gonna get kind of a crisper bend. But let's try it this way. What if I bend it, you know, I fold it back, thinking about this and having it in mind. So, you know, removing that interfacing right there while I feel like that would be kind of an extra step you'd need to think ahead on, it would provide a, a better, you know, it would be easier to fold it back there. 
because it would be kind of folding like like as if it's a, a fold line, you know? I'm explaining this so poorly. The front is closer. Ah, it's so hard when you have fit issues on both sides and then you realize, oh, I guess I needed to do both. <laughs> So now we have our pockets and we're going to attach them to the front now. I think like the instruction likes to do it where you do your whole pocket bag first. Am I right? Um, let's be further confused here. You go here. Wait, this is the inside and this is the inside. Oh my God. There we go. Like this. And so this right here goes to the center front and then this is your pocket bag right here, right? So let's do, a, I'm gonna do a French seam. I'm not very partial to, well, I shouldn't say that. I am pretty partial to French seams in general. I will say I especially like them on a pocket bag. And it's not even a, as hard of a French seam to do because because you don't really have to care about if the threads are showing to the inside of the pocket bag. Let's just clip this curve a little bit. So some folks will have you attach each of the pocket pieces and that's what I almost started to do and then do this bottom edge. So it's kind of pick your poison. It, it may be a little trickier to get the pocket now onto the pants. We're gonna iron that first before we do the next seam. Uh, but at the same time, did I do that wrong? I did that wrong, didn't I? I did the, I still did this wrong because of this pocket print thing. Oh my God. Sorry, you guys. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> yeah, it's a very sturdy interfacing. It's that I'm, I'm on double speaking, two times speaking. Oh, I'm glad you like this fabric. So this, like I said, this is my little thing. I really like the print to show on the inside of the garment and I just did it the wrong way. Because in my head I'm thinking, oh, you put wrong sides together. But classically, this is your wrong side, this side, but for me, it's the uh, other side of the fabric. So I'm sorry for those of you who like the print on the inside of your garment that I'm doing this. I keep doing this wrong, I'm messing up. <laughs> you won't ever make this mistake again, but I will. This is my thing. <laughs> I wish chat wasn't so delayed because you then you could shout at me. I had the dogs here for so long yesterday that I ended up having to have to cover up the bottom part of the window because there's so much wildlife out this window. They were going crazy was so funny. Those squirrels are so offensive to a dog, you know? As I was driving to work, I saw this fox pouncing in this field next to the street I was driving on. And man, I, I see them pounce occasionally, but this one was like, he was, he was into it. He, he was not letting this thing get away. His tail was everywhere. The, the, ta the foxes in this area have the longest tails I've ever seen. This little family that lives in our yard practically, you sometimes will see like two or three of the siblings playing and you just see the, all you see are tails everywhere. All right. So for my pants, the print is the wrong side because it's the side that's going into the pant like classically. So yeah, this is what I wanted to do. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you were yelling, thank you. Yeah, I've got the adrenaline boost from the audio challenge and no. 
The, the uh, audio definitely threw me off. This is right, right? It just feels so wrong every time I do it. You know what? I blame Instagram for this. Because, you know, for years and years, I sewed stuff and nobody knew it. And I didn't have to take a picture of it. You know? It's all Instagram's fault. But now that I get to show the inside of my garment, and I, and I personally do like seeing it. I used to do it on my jeans, you know, but no one saw, just me. But remember when you used to sew things and you'd be, and you'd be like, I'm still doubting. Um, you would show off the inside of something. You have to pull out your pocket to show them, you know. All right, so I'm just clipping this curve. Hi, Eliza, how's it going? You missed all the drama, that's all. There's no more drama from now on. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to predict that for myself. All right, so let's turn this, and I'm gonna try and press this seam a little bit just to one side, doesn't matter what side. It just will make this next step a little easier when I go to ironing it right here, you know? Get a nice curve. See, so now this is what you're gonna see on the inside of my garment, right? Yeah, Penny, these are the pockets. <laughs> Are you watching, do you watch the GDQ channel, Sydney? You know, um, I've definitely watched my fair share of Game Sun Quick. <laughs> Ray was not causing the drama. Ray's never drama. Ray's a delight, absolute delight. have a little bump there so I was just trying to suss it out let's look at it and see why so you see right there how I have a little bit of a point it's just because where I clipped just wasn't close enough together right there which one is it is it it's this one right here you like my pockets are you being sarcastic <laughs> wow Games done to it quick is where a lot of speedrunners speedrun games. So um, it's a whole subgenre of gaming where people will try. And there's there's leaderboards and world records, and then also challenges. So they'll be like, "Oh, um, we're gonna do a glitchless speedrun because there's exploits and glitches in games sometimes." So then they can really artificially do the game quickly because they're using glitches, which I don't watch those. I can't stand them. They really stress me out because <laughs> it'll be like they'll be off the map or under the map or something like that. And it looks really terrible. Um, or, you know, like one of the people I watch, he does like no healing, no crafting speed runs, you know, or permadeath. Stuff like that. Uh, I'm not, this is not a, a genre of gaming I'm particularly drawn to. I just kind of fell into it because one of the games I really, really love, the reason people still stream it is because it's a speed runnable game. And so then I at least get to see more people playing the game. Um, I just see them as speed runners. All right, so this is how my pocket's going to look. I think this is a nice pocket lining for these chinos. I'm okay with this. 
You guys always amaze me what I'm gonna be talking about. You're big GDQ fans. Oh, what kinds, what do you like? Hi, Chanika, how's it going? Mega kit, I love hearing you guys say that. This is my fabric design. I never talk about my fabric designs because I'm kind of like, you know, I feel like I'm really struggling. <laughs> All right, so let's be really obvious, Sammy. This is how you want your pockets to finish. So this pocket goes to this pair right here, or this leg. This one goes to this leg. So if you, if I weren't streaming right now, I would have said all that out loud anyway, because I would have worried I would have forgotten. And when I say it out loud, sometimes I hear that I say it out loud. All right. So look at this. We're going to put our facing. This is the slash pocket. I think this is the small pocket pattern. I'm putting this right sides together to the outer pant. We're going to sew this seam right here. I'm going to trim and tidy this up a little bit because I have some interfacing hanging off the edge there. And I think one thing to think about when you're sewing something like this is the, this ridge right here, you know, depending on what kind of fabric, it might show through right here, right? So if I'm um, folding along that seam right there, the ridge of the seam allowances can show through. So it is something to think about. And I think um, it is encouraged in the instructions to grade your seams. I hardly ever do that, but that would mean that you are, you know, trimming one of them a little bit smaller than the other like this. Be really careful that you're not cutting your pant. I think the best thing to do is to have the pant up and have only the possibility of the seam allowance at the, on the bottom side when you're doing stuff, this like tricky trimming or use your rotary knife. And see now we have it, you know, graded. So it's a little less bulky. So now it depends on your fabric or the style or, you know, what style chino you're going to do. So you can top stitch it or you can edge stitch it onto the, I mean, under stitch it. Sorry. Hi D Mac. How's it going? They're not that deep, but do you like the print? They're not purple. I know you're a fan of purple. Yeah, that's true. They do a lot of um, fundraising, Sydney. <laughs> you do the entitled case. All right, so what do I want? Do I want a clean kind of no top stitch? Oh, oh look, can you see? Oh no, it's too bright. There's a deer out there. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. I still get excited by the wildlife. <laughs> so, um, do we want a, you know, a, a, a look that is not top stitched here or do we want a top stitch? You know, I think it looks kind of nice without it. So I think I'm going to understitch it. So that means I'm going to press this seam allowance towards the pocket lining. Mine's pretty stout, so I've got to really, you know, push it there. Make sure it's all to the seam allowance. Press it all, all the way there. And this will kind of hold the seam allowance to the inside and allow it to drape over without it showing on the right side. See that? It's a little dark. Let me brighten this up. D, D Mac, Dalvin, we've talked about this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are so sweet. My internet's been terrible lately, D Mac. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So we brighten it up a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. A little better. I've already brightened this up a little bit. I don't want to, I want to blind you. Is that better? Looks pretty nice though, right? All right, so from this side, I'm going to kind of line up all of my edges here. I got a lot of random thread here. Line up your side seam. Oh, I didn't finish stitching my pocket. 
I'm gonna stitch my pocket here. I'm really thrown off today. I think this is a classic issue of, you know when you're all of a sudden realize you're late and you start rushing and then you catch your belt loop on the, you know, the, the door handle and you trip over your purse and you slip in a one single tiny drop of water and you're just like, okay, now I'm even later. I need to just calm down because I'm so excited to do a speed run here and then I'm making it take, I'm making all these mistakes. All right, see you DMAC, thank you. All right, so we're gonna line up these edges here at the waist and the side seam here and we're just gonna stitch it down in the side seam inside the seam allowance, sorry. So make sure you have this all lined up, just like that. Look at this. If it's a little bit off, don't, don't force it because you see like you can get this buckling, right? So if I drop this down over here, you see that I get this little bit of a wrinkle. We don't want that because the reason it's doing that is because I've ironed some of these pieces and they're probably a little bit constricted because of the interfacing. Do it from this side, make sure it's all nice and flat and then we're just gonna tack it in the side of the seam allowance, just like this. I'm just gonna go that far. This one goes way over. Interesting. The cargo short didn't do that, I wonder why. I'm still suspicious of what I did there. All right, let's do the outside. Let's finish sewing the bottom of this pocket. I'm just enclosing the seam allowance that I already sewed. I definitely used a larger seam allowance doing this French seam. I would recommend adding a little bit, you know, before. to figure out your, oh, okay, exactly. Shanika's like, oh, are you talking to me? <laughs> what, what, what do you guys, do you do GDQ as well, Eliza? Oh, that's really cool. That's so cool that you guys both were watching that one. That game is so funny. I didn't know it was a, a speed run runnable game. All right, I'm gonna trim this, grade the seam allowances a little bit. And now we're gonna understitch it pressing the seam allowances towards the pocket. And now we're going to line it all up to the side seam and the top waist. Make sure it's nice and flat. So you know, look at your opening here, make sure it's nice and flat. This is this is actually pretty thick here. Like this right here, this this is pretty thick because you have both facings from both pocket pieces um, and your seams. So rushing right, <laughs> All right? So I'm gonna watch this in double time. Okay, see you, Sydney. I don't feel like I'm rushing. I'm just a little bit out of sorts. That's what it is. But it's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. I'll find my rhythm. I'm feeling a little better now. 
You would think it's because wardrobe by me is here and I'd be nervous and I'm actually not nervous about that at all. <laughs> Maybe I should be. All right, so we're gonna go to our back pockets now. So I'm gonna get out the pocket facings, the pocket bags, and I still haven't marked the welt openings because I'm gonna do that right before I sew things. So I'm going to add the pocket facings to the back pockets. And this is another thing I might confuse myself on what fabrics go where. So this one, I, I really didn't have much fabric. So I have these on the cross grain and the selvage showing. And this is the side I want to show. So we're gonna put the facing for me on the wrong side of the fabric, but this is gonna be considered the right side in the pattern, okay? <laughs> 47 of 87. Is it really 87 steps? <laughs> okay, so one thing different about these than the cargo pockets is that the notches on these facings, they, they go to a notch here. And I think it goes like this. There's a little bit of a taper to the facing so you can kind of locate it. Because I've ironed the interfacing, it kind of you know shut my notch there. So just like that. So I'm gonna overlock these edges here on all four of these facings first. I did sew the pocket seam. I don't know your name, wardrobe by me. Sorry. I did. I caught it at the last second. <laughs> it's always entertaining around here. All right, so let's. Just gonna overlock these long edges here. You could turn the edges under just like we did on the front, uh, but I think that's unnecessary. And the reason I think it's unnecessary is because these are areas that um, are completely hidden and you might want it to be a little lower profile back there. You also may not have the seam allowance for it and you don't want this welt getting too narrow. It's fine on the one side that's just uh, behind the welt, but the one that's creating the welt, you know. threads all right all right eighty seven <laughs> That's funny. Um, I did see that they were like stacking up, but some of those steps are really short. Don't look at the number, Terry. Look at the progress. All right, so I'm gonna line up the notch. And if you want, like I, I could actually see myself right now changing to a white bobbin thread since that's gonna show on the other side, you know? Should we try that? I just feel like I may end up having to switch a little too much, you know? Let's see. Where's the heck? Oh. Where's my white bobbin go? Oh, there it is, sorry. And then we'll switch out the bobbin when we go back since it was getting really low. Yeah, the dream trousers. Those are for your son, right, Terry? The risk I run with this is that um, you might see the navy thread being pulled to the bobbin. 
I could fiddle with it, but I'm not gonna. We're just gonna go with, for a little less of the blue showing than it would have. So it's more invisible on this side. It's a little bright, huh? Let's put this one on. This one. Don't get any threads, you know, trapped between if you don't want them to be visible. This is not a very visible area though. And I know some of you are probably really nervous about doing the welt pocket in a second, but I promise it's gonna be real easy. We're not worried about it. It's, it's just a few seams, that's it. All right, so now we have these, and see now we don't have all that navy blue stitching showing. But I'm gonna switch now back so that um, when I'm stitching on the right side, I don't inadvertently pull up the bobbin thread to the right side because I wouldn't want the the white to show on the right side, right? And when I change bobbin thread, I have to sew a little bit because I get this little bit of thread vomit. I like to call thread vomit. All right. Okay, so now we're going to mark our box. And I wrote a note to myself to mark the box, draw on the wrong side of the pocket and the right side of the pan. And so this is considered the wrong side of the pocket and this is the right side of the pocket. And we have, so when I did the cargo pocket or the cargo shorts, I did this thing where I photocopied the pattern piece, just this part, onto a piece of cardstock so that I could easily trace the box on there. And I recommend doing that. I think it's a great thing to do. Hey, Vestigial, how's it going? <laughs> nice, that's so nice to hear. Good job getting both kids down, you know, for bed. That's a, an award in itself for a lot of parents. going to okay mine's not lining up very well here the dart does but not oh yeah the box does it's just two different sizes so if you were at the cutting live stream you learned that when I had this copy shop printed they didn't print all the titles grain lines or um the titles in the grain lines and I had him print two sizes and so then I had to reprint all of the text and stuff and when I went to do that, I printed the other the two sizes that were the same one and then the one above it. And so I accidentally misremembered what I had him do. So that you're seeing two, three different sizes here. <laughs> That's why it looks like this. But it, I'm the solid line, so it's okay. Oh, are they for you, Terry? Those uh, slacks that you're doing? Your dream trousers, I should say. There's so many ways to mark this box. I'm just doing this the most obvious way because I'm live streaming and I just need it to be a little bit easier sometimes to make sure I'm really accurate. I'm just being completely honest with you. So some of the ways you could do it is you don't have to cut this box out. You can actually like bend the paper down, draw a line. You could use your ruler. I think using a ruler is a really good way to do it. It's, let's see, I'll tell you what it is. It's three eighths of an inch wide, I think by five and a half. Yeah, by five and a half. You know, so then you could just go, oh, okay, I'm going to draw, you know, you fold down your paper like this, you know, line up all your edges, fold your paper down, 
draw that one line and then use your ruler to draw in the box. I think that's a really good way because it's, it's really accurate as well. So. All right. I may just use my charcoal liner. And then for the pants, I'm going to look at these. We're going to mark the, I've got my darts marked here on the wrong side. And I'm just going to put the pin to the right side so I know that that's the dart so that I'm lining it up. And I think um, I could use my charcoal liner here too. Sometimes mark this stuff does stay around. So I would be really careful with this. I think I'm just gonna mark the ends of the box. Cause I, I'm not gonna see this when I'm sewing it. I'm not, I'm not gonna see the pants. I'm gonna see the pocket. So I just need to get the pocket lined up on here. That's it. So it's kind of unnecessary to mark too much. That's the other layer right there. I'm not, I'm not uh, inaccurate there. All right, so we're just gonna do the ends. You could also just do pins, like, you know, poke the pins in the corners there. That's sufficient too. That works really good. All right, so now let's put in our dart, the wrong side. Uh, where's my other notch? Well, shoot. I can't see it. Oh, I see it on that one. Oh, I do see it. Oh, that's funny. Okay. I see it in the way that it kind of marred the fabric, but I didn't really cut through. Okay, yeah, that one's there. All right. Hi, Gregory, how's it going? Nice. Wow, thank you for saying that. That's, that means a lot to me. I'm really glad. All right. Lost my notch again. Why, why can't I see that notch? That's so, I can see it on one side, but not the other. All right, so um, I'm not, I usually hand tie my darts. I explained this last time, but because this is uh, this fabric and higher uh, abrasion area, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my needle, go down to the point. I'm gonna turn the pants around and I'm gonna sew into the seam allowance of the dart and back stitch. But normally I would hand tie, especially if this were like a bust dart. So I'm gonna put my, Needle there at the vanishing point of the dart. I'm gonna turn around. Oh, I missed it. Wow, okay, fine. So leave your needle in there. Turn around and I'm gonna go into the seam allowance of the dart and just backstitch, just like that. And then this, is, this point's gonna go into the pocket. So let's sew them both so we don't forget and we don't lose our marking on the other one, which would happen. If you iron it. Okay, so, so Barbara, yeah, I feel like I never ever had a problem with the Choco liner. And then I started having a problem. I thought it was the formula, but now I'm, I think honestly that it was the yellow, because of the yellow. I used to always use white. 
So that kind of, and someone else has said something similar and that kind of confirms that. I'm gonna quickly iron the dart and I'm not gonna touch the chalk. <laughs> That's good to know because um, I really love the chalko liner, you know? Okay, so press your dart towards the center back rise. Depending on your fabric, you could top stitch this if you wanted. We did on the cargo short, it really makes sense on that one. Um, but maybe you're going for kind of a, you know, a lower profile look or a sleeker look, or maybe your fabric is really delicate and you're just like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna top stitch that because it's just, you know, adding more needle holes and something. <clears throat> you never know, you know? Okay, let's get rid of this. Grab one pocket and one leg, doesn't matter which. They are symmetrical. Me, yeah, that's a good idea, Barbara. And that's kind of why I didn't do the whole box because I've been experiencing that so often, you know? Really, uh, where I see it, Barbara, is the um, buttonholes. When I'm marking buttonholes, I see it. All right, so we're going to, I thought there was a notch up here. If there's a notch up here, it goes to the dart. I don't know why I don't have it anymore. <laughs> was it there? I mean, did I just miss it? It is there, my grain line's covering it up, see that? Oops, no, I'm marking the, geez. I ended up marking my green line. All right. All right, so we have our pocket. My print is, this is considered the wrong side of the pattern piece, okay? Yes, exactly, Martina. Yeah, that's my experience too. I noticed it when we used to sew the, the accordions in chicken boots. So I made this needle case, and when you opened it up, it was nine pockets, and it was accordion pleated on the side. Um, and I used this template to mark all those pleats. That yellow chalk is still on the, the thousand people have, who have that accordion. <laughs> that all have yellow, you know? All right, so line up that notch to the dart there, and then we're going to line up your box. on your pant. I'm gonna just do like a quarter, corners that are diagonal to each other. Now this is gonna be finicky because your dart is kind of shaping the butt of your, you know, the curve there of the back of your pants. But when all is said and done, you want your pocket centered over this box, right? And then the top of your box is gonna be at the bottom of your dart. You might even sew through the tip of it. All right, so we're gonna sew the box here. And I like to start in the middle, not, not like on a corner. It's so tempting because I sometimes do that occasionally. <laughs> but start in, in one of the straight sections. I kinda wanna see if I can I don't usually pin, so I'm finding like it's kind of hard to see. But I, I can't. Uh, I didn't. I didn't do any uh, chalk there, so I can't see anyway. All right, so let's just do that. I like to back stitch away from the corners because the corners you really want to just be the stitching of your thread, not the back stitch. Try and keep your box nice and even. I did three stitches on the other end, so I'm gonna just do the same number on this end.
this way also, if you decide that you want to reposition this box, you don't, you're not removing a back stitch at the corner there. Like right now, my box is a little wider in the center than in the corner there. And look at that. See that? It's kind of, my box is a tad wider than the, the corners there. So the good news is, all I need to do is fix it right through the middle here. And I wouldn't really have to get close to the corner. I can maybe even do my back stitch like right here. There we go. That looks that looks a little better. I know it's probably really barely visible on your end. But then we can just remove this stitch here. I, and honestly, do I, did I really need to adjust it that much? Probably not. Kind of regretting fixing it. <laughs> but I'm just trying to do that as an example because I do think that sometimes we're so nervous doing a, a like a step like this, like the, the welt pocket that we will then like just get it a little bit off. We're like, we're a little too shy, you know, when we go to sew it. And better if I'm seam ripping away from the stitch that I want to keep. That way I don't accidentally catch the one that I want to keep, right? And then make sure that all these threads are pulled very clearly to the inside of your welt. That way, if you can't like get all of it out, the thread is not going to poke through the welt seam. Let me just get rid of a few more threads here without accidentally pulling it, you know. No, I can't grab it. There it is. And then, you know, on your second box, you're probably going to be a little more confident and you're going to be like, okay, I know where I want this. My problem is that I got my needle holes directly parallel to the other ones. I should have made sure I offset it a little more. There we go. Ah, thanks for following Blue Dog. <laughs> Hi, Elena. Nice. Ah, uh, gosh, Hannah. I don't. I would guess that it's in the five ounce range. I got it from that mill in store that I went to on that trip. And, you know, I didn't write it down. <laughs> I'm really writing fixing this. This was such a little amount. It's too many threads, you know. All right, let's go to this side now. Here we go. Okay. We're back on track. All right, so now we're gonna cut our box. That classic double Y that you get into each corner. So try and get it started with something. You really don't need to draw this um, cut either. Um, you know what I was thinking the other day? Oh, I'm not going to do that. You know what I was thinking the other day would be a really great way to do your corners if you're really careful is using a buttonhole cutter. You know, like you could get right there in the corner. Bam! Bam! You know? I, I don't want to do it on my, mach my machine table here. And I, don't, I don't have a pad to set it on right now. But I just thought that that could be a really accurate way to make sure that you get into the corners because the action of going <laughs> is sometimes fraught with disaster, right? So just so, or I mean, cut this to about a half inch away from that corner. This does not have to be straight. It doesn't matter. You just need a slit there. Um, you, you know, you kind of want to divide up the seam allowance and now you're going to get right into that corner. This is what determines how crisp your box is going to be. So don't be shy. It's a little thick because I actually interfaced at this time and this interfacing is clearly stouter than I realized. So. Hope I haven't missed any chat. 
Now what happens if you accidentally cut through your box? You are not the first, nor will you be the last. I've done it too. Um, if you have enough seam allowance in whatever welt you're using, just make your welt bigger and then do the same to your other pocket unless you've already finished that one. No one's gonna really notice an eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch wider pocket. I mean, they might because their hand's going into and out of it, but it's better than crying, you know? You can have a little cry first, that's okay. That's really okay, so. But just, you know, make sure you get into those corners. So the key to getting this welt is to have a nice, you know, turning your corners when you stitch the box and then getting that clipping right there. Yeah, exactly, Terry, that, that happens. All right, so then we're going to turn it to the inside and it's gonna, like I say always, it's gonna look like a hot mess and like it's not gonna turn and it's okay, like it will. At first it's just, you know, this is when we talk to the fabric and we say, this is your new home, you know? And it just needs to learn that this is the position it's gonna be in. But look at this, it doesn't look like it's gonna turn, but it will. I'm trying to get it so you can see really good. So once we have it here, we're just gonna start pulling and pulling and pulling. And then we're gonna go iron it. Oh, Terry, that's such a bummer. I have definitely done that. Lynn, did you, st I didn't see it on my other screen. Thank you. <laughs> that's nice of you. I like the little happy face, keeping it simple. All right, so we're gonna just press this seam a little bit. Now, when we go Thank you again, Lynn. I'm sorry I don't have the alert on the, did it show up on this on this screen? I hope so. I'll, I'll replay it for you if you didn't get to see your, your kitty cat. <laughs> um, so when we go to do this welt right here that we're gonna pick up and fold, you want the seam allowance of the bottom of your pocket to point into the pant, even though it really wants to do whatever just make sure that it's pointing into the pant, okay? And it's kind of good to do it from this side sometimes because you can see a little bit of the pant, the right side of the pant showing just, you don't want too much because this opening is pretty narrow. But then that way you know that your pocket isn't showing to the right side. All right, so, so this one here, and this one's just gonna lay flush to the pant. So you need this to be a nice crisp opening as well. Remember your dart is, is gonna probably do that, you know, it's gonna kind of push down. It's okay. It's okay. All right, see how it looks on this side. So now I always get these wide, these little like uh, little pucker thingies there, and it's this kind of style of welt because you don't have as much seam allowance, kind of propping it up. But when we also sew the welt, it's gonna be better. I don't see any of my chalk, that's good. All right. So now fold up your welt to the top of your opening here. Don't pick up the seam allowance. Leave the seam allowance down here. So in some ways, if you wanna do this, iron this so that the welt is up and the seam allowance is down. Just fold it up to the top opening there. Make sure it's straight. You can kind of see how much you're folding right here on each end. Get a nice straight one. <laughs> right, Rebecca? 
really the sewing on these pants, see pants are so easy to sew. It's just about the details really. Do you want, um, I have like a little tuck there and I don't know why. Is it the bottom of my dart, do you think? Why do I have a tuck right there? It's the, the fly and the pockets. If you were just sewing these on your own, though, it would probably go faster. I'm being a little instructional. There you go. You have your, well, it's a, uh, boy, it could look a little better. <laughs> do you love how I just giggle it off? Just giggle it off. <laughs> like I said, I just make sure my husband's not wearing his glasses. So I want to see if Lynn got her a little kitty cat. There it is. I didn't see it. Yeah, I've seen that too, Terry. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think there's lots of ways to do it. You know? All right, so I'm going to make sure that this is straight to the seam. I have this little white thread there and it's just, it's just the fabric flaw. It's not a flaw, but you know, like see how I have these little speckles. It looks like that's, it's like coming out there, but it's in the middle of my wall. It's not, it's just unfortunate, honestly. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch the bottom of this welt right here, the bottom opening. So we're going to stitch through all the layers right here. Okay, on this side, about a small eighth of an inch away from that seam. Exactly, Barbara. And remember, you're trying to keep your welt nice and straight. So this part's pretty easy. The next step is, isn't hard, but you can, it's optional. That's what I was gonna say, it's optional. Yeah, I think that little tuck is like the, the point of my dart. All right, so we have that top stitched down. And now the next step is going to be to finish your pocket and the sides, and then we're gonna top stitch the other three sides. So now if you want, you can just fold up your pocket, overlock these edges. First of all though, first of all though, Let's stitch down these welts right here because I found that this helped me a lot with the cargo shorts. Peel this back and stitch this down right here. And I'll, I say that because mine kind of wanted to kind of, um, when it was upside down, the welt kind of dipped down into this box. So right now the, we're looking at the pant from this side, but when you're looking at it from this side and you go to sew all your pockets and stuff, what happened was this welt kind of dipped down in there and it made it like I had a little pucker on each corner. So I'm gonna kind of make these welts a little more, you know, prom, you know, permanent before I go to sew anything else. I'm gonna make sure all these edges are lined up too. Oh, thanks, Julia. Yay, welt pocket encouragement. I'm not the best at these, obviously. I know what it takes to make it a little better, but it mostly takes practice. <laughs> and I just don't sew these very often. Okay, so now we have that. Now I'm going to, um, am I gonna switch to cream thread? I should, huh? So let's get our other one sewn and I'm going to switch to white thread and sew my pocket bag so it looks a little cleaner this time on the inside and I'm going to French seam it as well. So we're going to do our other welt right away. I bet you like that. I should definitely practice these and I'll probably do a dedicated video to the wardrobe by me welt pockets. See there's my edge of my dart. Yeah, so I need to make sure I don't get a little uh, tuck. Thanks again, Julie. Thanks, you guys, all of you. It's really nice. I 
All right, so I'm just pinning that to the corner. I'm not pinning it down yet. I'm lining up the in the pocket bag notch at the top to the dart. You only really need this side. You don't need the other side. So we got that to the dart seam right there. All right? And then we have this corner here lined up to the pant. All right. And so the pocket box on the pant is going to feel a little shorter than the bag and that's because of that dart. So it's not, it's not shorter. You need to smooth it out, get it all lined up. All right. And so now let's do our box. And this time when I go past my dart, I'm going to be certain to um, make sure I'm not getting that little tuck. I can feel it. It wants to. What is that? See, that's the style I first sewed. I got pretty good at them, but it's been a long time since I sewed those. See, again, I got this wider here than down here. I feel like I need I need a, a wider end. So maybe what it is is my stitch length could be a little bit smaller so I could get a fourth stitch at the end. Because when you think about it, the width of your chalk line, you know, that makes a difference. Like this is a very imprecise line when you're talking about uh, a welt pocket, right? It looks really nice and precise, but the width of that line can really change the width of my box, right? I need to sit back in my chair a little bit. And so I could have made this a little wider then, you know, I'm not gonna change this one again. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna start my box again and I'm just going to make the ends a little wider. Ooh, this is a little risky, but I'm just kind of experimenting. I just wanna see, you know? And I don't have to remove any stitching because it's on the inside. Because if I would have done a smaller stitch length, I don't want to go larger. You definitely don't want to go larger, not on a welt. So let's get rid of these threads. Now we're going to cut our box. I had to kind of start mine with the seam ripper last time. Don't get carried away using the seam ripper. I almost brought my Audrey jacket in for proof on that. <laughs> I actually did not get carried away on that. So yeah, exactly, Sweet Pea. It's a good exercise to do. It is a little bit, Barbara. But I also think it's because um, of that I'm going for that box and I'm not as worried about that box. So like maybe in the middle of my box right here in these straight sections, I'm sewing like right on the chalk or, you know, to the left of the chalk on the chalk or to the right of the chalk. Like those are three different spots. And when I get to the corners, I'm like, okay, I gotta go for what I think is the corner, you know? All right, so let's see, did we get that close enough? This looks pretty good. Remember, go right into that corner. Don't go through. 
you know, and sometimes you can go, you can take your seam ripper, poke it in the corner and then go away. If you're feeling like your scissors are just not cooperating. Like that. That's why I think the buttonhole cutter could be a good thing. I have to admit, I'm, I'm not a big fan of using the buttonhole cutter on buttons. And I think it's just the style of buttonholes my machine does are just a little narrow. So then I'll clip one thread, you know? All right, so let's put this to the inside. Remember, first it's a hot mess. And then it's beautiful. <laughs> All right. Just like that. All right, let's iron. But the flap can hide so many cents. <laughs> the flap is a good idea. I just got my arm like stuck under the table. I stole this chair from a neighboring office that's abandoned. It's a little better than my other one. All right, so remember the bottom, you want the seam allowance to go down and we're gonna fold the welt up. So you might as well just, fold, you know, iron this down like this, like keep your pocket open. Get rid of those little tucks from this side. I just created one though, did you see that? After this step, we're going to sew, pretty sure the fly. So one of the things I think could really make your pocket opening look good is interfacing. Look at this pocket. Look at how nice this looks on this side. And this side, not as nice. So I think honestly what you could do is if you have the, the weight of the fabric can handle, it's not too, gonna make it too bulky. Or what you do is leave off the interfacing on this piece and put it on to center it over your pocket opening. I really think that that would go a long way to getting rid of this. In fact, I really now wish I would have thought of that because it's like, oh yeah, that's what I used to do. You know, that kind of realization. Because look at the difference. All right, so let's iron up the welt. Make sure the seam allowance stays down. Folding it up three-eighths of an inch evenly. So Terry, I hope you caught that. If you're not at this point, I would interface your welt opening. When you get there. Oh, that looks really bad. Look at that. <laughs> it looks like a little round bump. <laughs> this is one way you could do it too. If you want to make sure you're getting it even, you know. I have the pant, this is the right side, folding it back where this welt, the top of this welt is going to go. This also allows you to press the seam allowance that way. Interfacing is so stout. There we go. That looks better. Okay, stitch that down. Just making sure, because it looks a little wider on this end. Let's see. Oh, 
Oh, definitely on a zippered pocket. I think that's a great idea too. The more I sew these, the more like little things come back to me. All right, we're gonna sew the ends of this welt here so that I make sure that they're staying nice and straight. And then we're gonna top stitch the bottom seam below the welt right here. Okay. So the reason you get these tucks too is because remember you have this triangle right here. You see that? So the triangle is on the end and on the top and the bottom, right? So that little, little wrinkle you're seeing is this spot right here. There's no fabric to fill it up, you know? So honestly, like what if you could, you know, and I, I, maybe you could after the fact, if you're kind of like, hmm, I really don't like that, you know, put some interfacing just on this corner here. Because then once it's, you know, that's actually a little too much. Can I do like three layers? Let's see what three layers look like. Can I have three layers? Let's see. So this is three layers of canvas right there. Because remember, this is really thick, these seam allowances. So if we filled that up, you know, it takes away the little pucker. <laughs> so obvious, right? So it doesn't matter how good your sewing is. Sometimes there's just forces that work against you, right? So just remember that. All right, let's change out to my white thread. White. I use cream for everything. We're just gonna sew the pocket bags together and then I'm gonna switch back to the navy blue. Oh, I, oh, I was gonna say I hadn't threaded the needle. Of course I hadn't threaded the needle. I'm switching thread color. Thread color. All right, so I'm gonna do a kind of a fake French seam again here. And it is a little tricky because I gotta kind of fold the bag with the pant inside like that. This is also why sewing that welt first right here, like in the side seam, is, it helps me so that it doesn't, you know, like kind of drop down. That well will sag. Oh, same thing here. It's a little awkward. And because you're kind of fighting with your pant being in the way, that's a perfect example of where the well can start to kind of slip down. Make sure right here that this welt is still nice and perpendicular to the raw edge of this seam that I'm sewing right now. I'm gonna trim this a little bit. No one's gonna see the inside of this, but you know, it doesn't have to be that thready. That's one of my pet peeves is when there's threads coming out of my pocket. I talk about it all the time when I'm doing, sewing like the back pockets on something, you know, and like I've spent, uh, before I was making my jeans, I spent, you know, $80 on these jeans because I loved how they were a little bit stretchy and they wouldn't sag out over the day, right? I could wear them a few days in a row. But I don't know why for $80 jeans, there'd be this thread coming from the top of my pocket coming out and it just made them look so cheap, you know? 
All right, let's turn the pocket right side out. <clears throat> I use my awl to get a crisper point down here. And then we're ready to iron and sew that. And I'm just gonna check, make sure I didn't do anything to it. And then this will also be the stage once I'm done with that, where we're top stitch on the bottom and around. I'm gonna iron that. So, right sides together. And make sure your welt stays, the folds stay perpendicular to that raw edge there. Oh, what did I just hear? I thought I heard my little drawer rattling. All I can think about is interfacing that pocket opening right now. <laughs> you know? It's like once sometimes when you realize a good idea and then you're just like, I have to do it, I have to do it, I have to do it. I feel so unfulfilled right now. Get all these little threads towards the seam allowance. Checking my well, making sure it's still perpendicular. threads. Kind of badly. All right, let's press and then I'll um, we'll stitch them down. Here we go. Couldn't get my hand in there and I was like, wait, I know I'm doing this right. All right. Because I'm doing the French seam, it can get pretty thick right there too. See that? I think sometimes you can see this edge of the pocket through pants. You don't realize it until now probably that we're talking about it, you know, and then you're like, oh yeah, you're right. I do see that sometimes, you know. It can be pretty thick, you know. Maybe I could make this press a little crisper by pressing it first that way. It's kind of getting that seam nice and flat. And then, yeah, that's way better. One thing we noticed with the cargo short when I did this was I stitched this welt fold down a bunch of times and it really flattened it out. So just note that that might help if you're having some too, too thick of a bump there. You can kind of tame it by just putting a bunch of stitches through it. All right. Okay, make sure you keep your pant out of the way. That's why I like doing it with the pant on top. And I'm still making sure I keep those those uh, welt folds perpendicular to the side seam. You don't want anything making it kind of sag down. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. This fabric is the Grand Satin. Wait, what's that stuff called? Perennial Satin Grand, I think, from uh, Spoonflower. This right here is. And it has kind of a smooth face. It's really nice, but... It has kind of a smooth face, which I think makes it a little bit slippy on the presser foot. All right, then we're gonna 
just gonna top stitch that and then we're onto our fly, right? Yeah, the fly. I feel like I need to vindicate myself on that thing after the last one. All right, so let's make sure, get that nice, perpendicular. I can even kind of put my all in there. So let's top stitch the pocket. I'm gonna do it like the instructions say this time rather than skip that. Just so we have both options. You guys are doing that quiet thing again. <laughs> Don't think I'll need the white anymore. I usually clean out my bobbin and the bobbin case every time I change out my thread. I don't do it really on camera just because it's the compressed air. It'd probably be pretty noisy, but um, I do do that pretty often. The fuzz buildup from thread is pretty significant. It can really, you know, gunk things up. If I'm just going back and forth like quick amounts, you know, I just do it for when it's like, like between projects. All right, so lay your pocket nice and flush with your pant. Let's look at it. Oh, maybe I should leave the white bobbin on. I'm gonna leave the white bobbin on. Or... I'm gonna try it. I don't want the, um, <laughs> I don't want the uh, machine to pull up my white bobbin to the front. I think it's thick enough that it won't. I mean, it doesn't on this cargo fabric here. So I think we're gonna be okay. And the reason I want that is so that it looks nice and clean. Cause if you notice my cargo pockets, you did see a lot of all my top stitching, you know? All right, so we're going to top stitch this pocket around the three remaining sides. So I'm gonna go up the short, across the top, and then down. So make sure you have your, you know, everything should be pretty much sitting where it's gonna sit because this is a pretty sturdy construction now. But you know, if you wanna kind of like manipulate things like with your awl or whatever, you can kind of do a little bit of wiggling. Like I'm gonna make sure my opening is sitting right above the welt, stuff like that. You can still tell it what to do a little bit. You're the boss. We haven't, I haven't said that in a while, but I just wanna remind you guys. You are the boss of this sewing project, so. So like my, op my uh, box corners, they are a little narrower than the welt. I don't know if this is the one that I corrected. I'll be able to tell when I do the other one. I was kind of hoping I'd stitch over that weird little white bump. That looks pretty good. And look, you don't see my stitching. That's a nice touch. Um, sometimes you'll also see pockets with a little loop hanging out here and then a belt button. So, <laughs> nice, Lynn. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Oh, what was that? That sounded like a pin or something. All right, so where's our other one? Here's our other one. Is this the one that I had the, I can't even tell which one I fixed. Oh, see this one did do that little, see, can you see that in there? I wonder if I can straighten that out. I have a little bit, see where the welt kind of sagged in there. 
So let's see, you see it right? Can, oh, you can kind of see this little bump right here. So let's see if we can kind of finagle that. That feels like it got stitched like that. Like maybe, like this side looks really nice, right? But this side, right here. Right, Sweet Pea? <laughs> uh, Martina, yeah, I think so. A lot of welts aren't top stitched. Thanks, James. Oh, you're doing a Gilbert top. Ooh, oh, that beta fabric, noise. What do you think of that? I printed out a dress amount and it's so crispy. <laughs> I can't bring myself to do it. All right, I'm gonna, no one's gonna notice that really, but it is kind of annoying that I do have this weird little like, bump there. In this case, I think that the top stitching improves my sewing of the welt. Whereas on the cargo short, I don't feel like it would have. Remember we did it once and we took it out, you know. This one has a little bit more of a tuck and this is that side that has that weird little bump right there. And I think that, that what that is, is the, um, I feel like it's like, you know, sometimes when your fabric, one little strand of it gets caught. That's what I think that is. All right. They look pretty good. They look better than store-bought, right? <laughs> we know now. So next we're gonna do the front fly. I was just thinking like, what if we save some time a little bit? I'm gonna do the center back seam right now. That way I can serge it at the same time as doing my center front. So I'm gonna do the center back seam here. Now, I think there's some really excellent advice in the wardrobe by me patterns of doing a stretch stitch through the rise. I don't have that capability on my industrial. But we all know that this area right here of the seat of the pants wears out a little bit over time. So doing a stretch stitch might help that. I'm just getting rid of some threads here. It's only a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Oh, I know what that is. It's the bin vibrating against the window. All right, so we're gonna overlock that. That's ready. And then do our fronts. Oh, I was gonna research how to drop the knife. Shoot. Yeah, Elena, I'm not that into it either and I don't want to say anything. Oh, change the bobbin. Oh God, thank you. Bobbin. That's like the one seam. I really can't leave that in either. <laughs> Bobbin. All right, we'll just do a little bit here. I'm glad, Lynn. Are you anxious, meaning like you're, you're excited to try some out? I've had a um, note in my video ideas book for doing all of the different types of welts I could find. Those videos are done though. Like there's people that are doing them and they're doing them way better than I would just starting off the gate, right? But I kind of look forward to doing them, so. <laughs> it's nice that I'm human. I only sound like a robot at home when I'm playing video games because my internet's so bad. <laughs> I'm definitely human and everybody is, trust me, I, I've said this before, I've watched 
some sewing videos because they sometimes auto play for me. I, I, I don't look for them. <clears throat> I'm not trying to critique people's sewing videos and I am already got plenty of things I like watching, you know? So I um, have seen a few where they were, they're going along and it's a beautiful video. And then all of a sudden I can tell they switched from doing the left side of the garment to the right side of the garment. And that can really throw people off. And it's probably because they made a mistake on the other one. Like one time I saw it where they were doing something and then all of a sudden I could see that they had ripped out a part because the needle holes were still there. And then the next step was using the, you know, the left side rather than the right side, which probably threw so many people off. Cause I was kind of like, wait a minute, that, that, that can't work. That can't work how they're doing that. And I was like, oh, that's the left side now. You know, and that kind of stuff, if you're not going to mention it, like, oh, I made a little mistake, so now I'm on the left side, just say that. There's nothing wrong. People aren't going to be like, oh, this is a terrible tutorial. But they will if they're like, I can't figure out why mine doesn't look like that all of a sudden. Yeah, me too, Terry. Right, Elena? I know. That's exactly how I feel about that stuff, too. Yeah. And I've seen like some of their employee projects in it. And I'm like, is that the same stuff? So here's the thing, Elena. I don't know what print you picked, picked, but if you picked a print that's solid ink and isn't a white background, I think that that's a big, it makes a big difference. So my print that I picked has a blue background and it's like almost a navy blue. It's not as dark as this by a long shot but it's, it's dark enough. I would say it's the same saturation as if this were printed onto fabric, that color, you know? And when I like print like this, like when you see this compared to this, same print, same fabric, same piece of fabric they were printed on, this feels twice as thick as this. This is nice. I'd actually use this as a fab as a garment fabric, this satin grand. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you get synchronized ripping too. Thanks for telling me about the bobbin, you guys. You guys are the best. All right, so here's my fronts. And now we're gonna um, surge this. Can I figure out how to drop my knife live on camera? I really wanna learn how to do that. All right, I got a couple people saying, you can do that, you can do that. That's it. <laughs> oh, this feels so weird. Oh my gosh. I love this new machine, okay. I gave you guys all kinds of tips on if you can't drop your knife, on how to surge this center front rise opening. I don't have to worry about that now. Oh, this feels so weird. I'm used to looking at the knife. Okay. Oh my gosh. This is so disorienting for me. Where, where am I sewing? Where am I sewing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this feels so weird. Oh, uh, I can't do this. This is, I can't do this. Oh my gosh. I gotta get good at this. All right, so I'm gonna <laughs> okay, I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. Oh my god. Okay. That was that was one of the craziest sewing experiences I've had in a really long time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Okay, wait, this is so, okay. I'm glad you guys can't see me. This is, okay, if the knife was up, it would be right. Oh, this is so disorienting. It's right there, it's right there, okay, okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> I'm not cutting it. I'm not cutting it. But it feels like I'm going to. Okay. Okay. Oh 
Oh my gosh. Whew, I survived. Oh, that was harrowing. I'm gonna go get my backs. Oh my gosh, you guys are shouting at me in chat, aren't you? It has a cream background. Oh. I, can I line up the edge? I'm gonna see where, so maybe this line right here is that? Yeah, okay. This sounds different now. It's okay, right? Why, this thread looks like it's about to break right here. All right, so this line, my blade is to the right of this line. You're right. You guys are so smart. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. That was the, one of the most disorienting sewing things I've ever done. Do you know how many times I have overlocked a fly? That's the first time I did it without the, the knife. Okay, I'm just gonna reinforce the stitching through the rise here. Put another row. All right, so that's the back, okay. So you got cream bag, you got the same print in the cotton poplin and the color is so much vibrant in the poplin and the lawn. Yeah, the lawn, it feels like, I feel like it was a bad choice to use that to test one of my prints out because it looks, it's actually the print that made me go, I, I'm done with this whole fabric design thing because it makes it look like my design's not very crisp. And I don't like that. Like I, I specifically did that in a two color so it'd be crisp, you know? Okay, so we're doing our fly, and the thing I'm noticing this time is, remember the last time this only went up to the seam right here? Which was fine, because then this folds back on itself, right? Now on this side, so let's see, this is going to go like this, all right? This is how the pants are gonna look when they're done. The fly facing is gonna come over here. The fly shield is gonna cover this up. It's gonna get sewn to here and cover this up. But the problem with the cargo shorts was that because this stopped right here, it didn't get caught. Now the fly shield, which is right here, Right here, it's gonna go like that. So what if this, hmm. So this one, I'll probably trim this so we don't have this bulk here. Right, I'm gonna trim that, I'll put that up to the seam line and then it can fold right along it like that. Okay, and then for this side here, doesn't reach there, so it's not getting caught. This will cover up. So what if I, I could probably top stitch this down to here, and no one will know. What if I even just, Let's see, there's a seam allowance on this side. So if this went here and the seam allowance was gone, it'd be right there, right? So I think I'm going, oh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. So, yeah. 
why do I, what do I keep doing that ha makes this happen? Oh, the what, Martina? The peas of the senses. The pocket will not be showing. I hope the same happens with interfacing. So, yeah, I, well, I think that the shield is going to cover a lot of that up. Well, I need to stitch into the pocket here where it ends. That's not that cr critical though. What would I do differently here? You know what we could do? We could rip this out right here and end the pocket straight up. <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm kind of want to do that. At least on this side. How about we leave this one so you can kind of see how it goes, but I'm going to remove this right here. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I don't know. I'm going to go a little bit further back here. The chinos are, you know, they're a nicer pair. Oh, I cannot see my stitches. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just thinking. The zipper will be, it'll go through this one, but it's, ooh, but it, um, you would still see, that rod doesn't line up still. <laughs> so this is my solution for the left front. My preference. Should we look at the directions and just see what it looks like in the picture? Maybe we can see what I'm doing wrong. I don't feel like I'm doing anything wrong. <laughs> what step number is this? <laughs> oh, I turned right to it. Okay. So. Oh, so now in these pictures, it goes right up to that center line again. I don't know why mine doesn't. Maybe you're supposed to trim it. Huh. But we know from the cargo that that will... This one, this fly stays going that way. It does not come back over here. Right? All right, so let's, let's move a little bit. This is why I didn't stitch this down up here because I kind of knew, I was like, uh-uh. We need to figure this out first. So you could do this on both pockets, I think. My husband doesn't need a tummy panel, so I feel okay doing this. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna probably cut this now and I'm gonna keep it in line with that. So I need a little bit of a seam allowance here. Actually, and maybe what I'll do is take out the seam right here. I don't care about how it looks up here, but down here, we're gonna get the seam allowance. Kind of like right about here. All right, and then just push that out so we can kind of line it up like this. I'm going to do this. Something like that. And I'm cutting it to line up with the seam allowance. Uh, no, they, they printed. That's one thing I, I triple checked because of the weird printing thing I had. Not related to this though. No, the French seemed to take it away. 
Um, all right, so my only issue right now is getting in here to sew it, and that's kind of tricky. So let's see, where can I get in here? Let's take it, take this, I can still get in here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. We love this kind of stuff, right? So I'm just unpicking the stitch that kind of secured it to the waist edge. That's all right now, see? And so now I can get in here and we'll smooth it out. No problem. Or no prob prob, as my friend says. No prob prob. And if you're confused, like why for me this, this is, uh, like I know it's gonna do that, uh, just look at the cargo short. That, that's why, because we noticed that um, I didn't quite catch this side under the fly. Nobody will know but you and me. I'm brave. What do you mean I'm brave? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that, Martina. I know for you in particular, you wanted that. Look, no one will know. Look at that. See? All right. So this side, we'll have it like that. This side, we'll just leave to the, um, you all act like I don't know how to sew. Uh, yeah, you Martina too. <laughs> I didn't know you were here, you were here Martina mama. <laughs> so um, y'all act like I don't know what's gonna happen with this fly, but I do. So here's their center front seam, right? So, so see, these, see this fly right here? This is your, your seam line. That's where we're gonna sew the center front pant, right? So. Basically, it's this. Okay, so you could leave that there. You can. The reason I'm not going to is that when I fold it back, you have this ridge now of folded back fabric. It's doing nothing. You gotta be careful that you're gonna actually catch this in here. So now this is the side of the pant that you see the curved fly stitching. This is the right front, right? So now once that is stitched, no one's gonna see this raw edge here, right? Now I have had my history with these pocket stays with the ginger jeans and I kept forgetting to do them. So I understand you guys are nervous about me right now. <laughs> On the right front, I clipped that off to the seam line. And now we're back in action. And I think this is a good solution because this is gonna fold back over here and it's gonna stitch down anyway. Um, so, you know, if I would have made this pant go up, we would have had that anyway, so. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna do our center front seam and you're gonna baste from the waist edge at the notch that I forgot to put. Isn't that great? It should be right here where your fly facing goes to. This is the back, okay. We're gonna double check. Oh, so you need, you need to sew right there, so that's, that's what that is. There's no notch there, but th there could be actually, and mine didn't print it because I had th that. I could serge it off, but it doesn't matter, and I don't want to add any more bulk sweet pea because if, when I turn this back here, you know, certain fabrics, the texture of your thread's going to show through, and I honestly, um, I've, I have strong feelings about the way the serger thread can kind of add bulk to a garment. Look at how I wasn't very good at getting close to the edge. Look how wide my serging is. I didn't know where I was stitching because it folded it. So we're gonna sew the center front now, so you don't need to catch anything in there unless you have your pocket stays going to the center front, all right? 
and you're going to stitch straight down here and at the uh, circle right here that's where you're going to switch to back to your regular stitch so do a nice long basting stitch we are going to remove this you want it to be kind of easy don't back stitch at the top here go all the way down to that circle Switch back to your short stitch length, your regular stitch length, and finish your rise. Just like this, okay? And now you're gonna open it up. You're gonna also open up the fly. Compress it if you want. So it's gonna look like this. And now we're gonna top stitch. So now this is where I sometimes will, and, and most of the time you'll see me, because the, the instructions will say to clip right here. So I didn't do that on the cargo short, so I just want to show you that option. So you can clip to that circle or thereabouts, so something like that, right? So we're going to open this right here, the fly, but we're going to leave the seam allowance of the lower fly pressed towards the right front. And I'm going to top stitch it. So look, see my seam allowance still pressed this way. My fly. She is open. I guess it's a men's pants, maybe a he, I don't know. Maybe the fly's a she. You never know how the fly identifies. All right, so we're gonna push this pocket in there, right? So it's in there. Remember the one we just trimmed a little bit? This one is the one I sewed and finished. The other one is in there, so. Now we're gonna edge stitch along the center front here. And this is when, if you were doing jeans, you could do something kind of fun, right? You don't have your zipper in there yet. You could do a double needle. You could do loop-de-loops. If you do, tag me, I wanna see that. You know, this is also when maybe you're wanting to do some contrast thread or something like that. So we have the seam allowances pressed this way and this is open. Oops, <laughs> it's open. All right, all right. Let's see, uh, top zipper for my right edge of zip. Okay, yeah, we're gonna do our zipper. Where's my zipper? Yeah, I think so, Martina. There are definitely patterns we've seen. Um, I won't name names, <laughs> but there was a company that I just couldn't figure it out. And it was almost like the way they stitched the zipper was as if you assemble everything without sewing anything and then you stitch it all down and it was so hard. <laughs> um, but I understood why someone would do it that way and it's because logically your brain can now see what's going to be happening and what you're stitching and I think that's why they did it that way. Maybe that method speaks to them. So, all right, so I have a zipper. And we're going to place it face down on this fly. We're going to move the pant out of the way. All right. So you're, you've got everything to the left except for this fly right here. You're going to line up your zipper tape to the center front seam. Now my, uh, I couldn't find a five inch zipper. I could only find seven inch. So make sure your zipper goes above the waist now. And the instructions, it says, oh, you know, line up your tape, leave this bit here. Uh, if your zipper's too long, don't shorten it from the bottom, shorten it from the top. So put your feet, your zipper here lined up to the bottom of the fly. Let's get rid of this thread here. And the reason you want to do this is because when we go to stitch around the curve on the front, you now know you're going to miss the stop of the zipper, okay? <laughs> right, Susu? I know. They're all so different that I think that sometimes you can just make, if you find a method you really like, just make you, whatever pant you're doing the same pattern pieces. It's okay to do that. All right. Yeah, and this is very similar to the ginger jeans, Sweet Pea. I'm sewing this identical to how the, the ginger jeans are. That's why I know it so well. If I were doing uh, like the Megan, Megan Nilsson, I think is pretty similar to Ginger. Um, Cashmerette's pretty similar to Ginger. I think theirs is identical. 
I can't think of all the ones I've done. I've done like seven now. All right, so we're gonna put this, line up your zipper tape to the seam there, line up the bottom of your zipper tape to the bottom of the fly. And if you have a zipper foot, you can put it on now. We're gonna stitch the tape down to the right of the zipper. Got hung up on the stop. All right, now flip it back like this so that you can edge stitch what you just sewed. All right. <laughs> All right, so then um, you're gonna, I like to do this uh, where I turn the pan upside down to me. I find it a little easier. So now you're going to like, I think because I can see it is nice and flat and I can make sure that these shorter edges are towards the head of the machine. Instructions always show it right the other way with the pant right side up and I find that I can't, it's just harder than you're putting the, all the pant under the head of the machine, you know, to the right of it. But I know visually it, it's so people don't get lost in the sauce, right? <laughs> Ah, oh, awesome, Susu. You'll get there. It's just time. You see me make mistakes, I make them still. The thing is, you guys, it's like, it doesn't matter how good at something I am, I'm still gonna make mistakes because people do things differently and I'm just trying to do it the way they, they did it in their pattern. If I designed the pattern and sewed it, I probably would make a lot fewer mistakes, you know? All right, so then here, this is the little piece that you just edge stitched, right? And you're just gonna flop it over onto this side pick all this up. Make sure it's nice and flat too. It's like, make sure you don't get a bubble here. This is when your fly can kind of get kind of funky when you're, when you're wearing it. One of my pet peeves is when you can see the zipper, you know, peeking out from behind the fly or you have a little bubble or something, you know, so make sure it's all flat. Pick all this up. So all you have is one fly and one zipper, and we're gonna sew along the side here again. And uh, if you can, I would put two rows of stitches to reinforce it. I think I can put my one, one side of my presser foot on the zipper and it'll let me sew here. Oh, maybe not. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I can't get too close, but my zipper foot's kind of lame. So that's kind of, it's kind of wiggly. Let's see if I can get past that a little straighter. I'm just reinforcing it. Oh God, that's so ugly. All right. <laughs> All right, so now we have our zipper fly there. And so I'm pretty sure the next step is to sew the curve. Yep. So now you know, because your, your zipper stop is well away from this curve right here, you're not going to sew it. And like, it feels like I could have even had this higher up, right? So I only have about a half inch clearance there. So now from the right side, you're gonna sew this curve. I usually do it by feel, uh, but if you need to, you know, chalk this, or, you know, you could use her, uh, her fly pattern piece. This one right here. You know, lay this on here like this, cause look, there it is. And a lot of times you see this in the factory floor and they'll just put their presser foot right on the paper like this. And then you don't endanger getting chalk. So now the only thing about this is that this is the exact size of the fly and you wanna make sure you don't miss it. So maybe pull it away a little bit like this so you have a little bit of the ridge of the fly showing. You know what I mean? So. If you want to do chalk, go for it. I'm just going to feel it. So my machine, uh, maybe yours does this too, it wants to kind of stay on the thickness of this fly facing. And so even if I got down here and I didn't guide it, it would probably naturally start turning along that because it kind of wants to stay on that. <laughs> maybe I trust it too much. Oh, I'm sewing. Oh no, I think I was okay. I was okay, oh my God. I thought I had folded my pocket back, but I hadn't, it was fine. All right, so here's my curve, right? 
I'm feeling my pocket. Okay, here's my curve right here. Right? Yeah. I feel the pocket ridge and so I'm just kind of navigating around it. And then come to the center front fly. Don't do your back tacks yet because we're gonna do those when we have the fly shield on there. What are you stuck on? Oh, there we go. Um, we're gonna do that when we have the fly shield on because then that kind of tacks the fly shield over and covers up all this hoo-ha here. This, it'll make it look nicer. It's a fly shield for the person, but honestly, as a sewer, I really appreciate the fly shield to cover up all my icky stitching through here, you know? All right. So now I think we take the basting stitch out. We're gonna prep the shield. Oh no, we do that later on. All right, so we're going to sew the fly shield here, right sides together around the curve. I'm gonna kinda clip it. Mine's pretty bulky. I almost didn't interspace both layers, but I thought I'd go for it anyway. All right, I'm gonna iron this. And then after we do this, we're gonna assemble our pants, which is pretty quick, and then we're gonna do our waistband. These are already a lot faster, huh? I'm gonna surge this edge right here while I'm over here too. There we go. Look at that classy shield. I like this style. Never get to use this. It's nice looking. All right, so I'm gonna overlock this. All right. Okay, so we have our fly shield here and this sits like this, right? Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to turn up this little piece of uh, serging and stitch it in here so it looks nice and tidy. Where's my, there it is. I was like, where's the back stitch? Fly, sew fly to curve, prep shield, sew to right fly, bar tack, remove basting stitch. All right, this is our last part here. So now we're gonna attach this to this last little hanging edge here. We'll do it from this side. Why didn't I line that up better? Let's line that up better. I don't want to undo my surging thread by accident here. All right. I'm still here. Yeah, we're sewing these all the way through, Sydney. You're not getting rid of me today. So let's see, if I line that up with the waist I just wanted to make sure that lining it up here didn't make it fall short of the waist, you know? But that works just like that. Okay, so I'm lining it up, making sure it still lines up with the waist up here. And we're just gonna stitch that in the seam allowance, just like that. And now we're gonna do our bar tacks. And then, like I said, this kind of cleans up everything covering it up. Look how nice that's going to look. It's going to cover all that up because we're going to bar tack it. So it was looking like this. Now we're going like this. <laughs> right, Rebecca? I, you know what? As people have given me so many great tips on how to do those, Rebecca, and I should probably follow some of them, but I don't. So one of the other ones that I played around with once and I need to get back to trying it was 
when you go through the serger, before your knee, like right when your needle gets to the end, you flip the piece over and serge back on itself. I want to get good at that because I think it's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool party trick, you know? And when, I, when everyone was explaining to me in chat, it was hilarious. And um, when I tried it, I was I definitely felt like I was, you know, I was nervous. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna um, bar tack this and I'm gonna do one, make sure you're catching that fly shield. I'm gonna do one here. I just do, I'm gonna do a little fake bar tack. Like that. And then I'm gonna do one like right here at the bottom. In general, you're nowhere near your zipper teeth, so you don't have to worry. So now we can remove our basting stitch. And we can see it here, so let's try and remove it in one piece. I don't know if I, oh, I can't, Never mind. That's right, I can only see one side of it. It's so nice when you can remove your basting stitch in one piece, but one side is enclosed in the fly, so you, you kind of can't. So be really careful cutting your stitch there. You got this far, baby. No need to be cert, you know, seam ripping your fabric, right? All right, looks pretty good. That went nice and smooth. Let's make sure we can open and close it. Check now or forever hold your peace, right? <laughs> All right, there we go. So uh, now is a good time, because I always forget to do this, to making sure my waist here is a nice smooth line. Don't cut your zipper right now. Not when it's like this. All right, so let's just look at that. And then um, maybe what we could do is I feel like something was flopping around. Oh, it's this pocket right here. Is that what it was? It was just the pocket. It's fine. All right. This right here could be stitched down. There we go. I'm just looking it over, make sure I don't have any threads. You guys can't really see the threads, but there's some there. Yay. All right. So if you need to shorten your zipper, Pull it down <laughs> now, okay? And now we're gonna trim this. I'm just making sure I get everything nice and flat and smooth. If you have a brass zipper, be really careful. All right, don't pull your zipper up whatever you do, okay? Um, if you need to, maybe put a pin like this so that you don't accidentally pull your zipper up and you, cause you can't get it past that. See that? Ooh, I might be able to get it past that. So make sure you can't get past it. Do whatever it takes, you know? You can even put a safety pin through the zipper head and you know, safety pin it down. It's good to make sure. All right, so let's sew our pants together and put our waistband on. The only pattern pieces you should have left is your belt loops and your waistband at this point. Let's remember the label today. I think I forgot on these. Oh no, I, I almost forgot, huh? Okay, so here's the pants. Let's stitch down the pocket to the waist here. Oh, I didn't, I uh, haven't stitched my center back seam yet. So press your seam. I'm gonna press mine this way. So I always say this uh, because remember we, when we top stitched the center front fly here, we pressed the seam towards the left front. All right, this is the left front as you're wearing it. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna press this seam towards your right, which is the right back. This way when we match it all up in the, at the rise, at the, at the crotch juncture, all of these thicknesses will be offset from one another. 
So just always press your seams to the to your right as you're looking at the garment. All right, and then let's stitch down the pocket. And trim this up a little nicer. I feel like it got a little like swooped down there. I rarely do this, don't I? Maybe I'm getting better. I hope so. All right, put my, did I lose it? Did it go down that hole? Hmm. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna put my label in. I have this long thread here, let's get rid of that. Just because you can't see it very good doesn't mean you don't have a little bit of, you know, thread maintenance you got to do. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to center this over the serging. Put it down a little bit lower. I don't have much seam allowance on my silly little labels, so I got to like bias it towards the towards down, you know. So All right, so now we're going to do our side seams, right? Center back, rise, and top stitch, stretch stitch. I get to flip my directions over. Ooh, look at that. Side seam and top stitch, then the end seam. All right, side seams. I knew I was gonna have trouble getting over that ridge of the pocket opening. I won't hem these today because I'm gonna have him try them on first, all right? I'll do everything else. Put all your threads towards the seam allowance. Gonna serge these first, then top stitch them. These are uh, going pretty fast, don't you think? Okay, I have this ridge. Gotta get my machine up onto it. There we go. Can you hear it, huh? It's kind of thick. Okay. The waistband style that we sew on this one is flat on the inside and hangs down. That seam alone's got a little bit wiggly there. Um, I'm going to go back and forth here. So usually I sew waistband from the inside of the pant to the outside. I really like doing it that way, but this one you clean finish the edge of the inside waistband and it's a little it's it, it's got its own easy factor all right this is gonna be thick right here other than it pushing away a little bit when i approached it because it's an angle it sewed so easily
So because I'm gonna be top stitching this, pressing the seam to the back, I'm gonna keep this nice side of the serging on the fronts. That's just a little, you know, nice little detail. When it's this thick, I get worried I'm, I've got the other side of the pant under here. But it's just thick, that's all. All right. Oh, I do have blue fingers, huh, a little bit. <laughs> I don't mind blue fingers. I don't like it when my machine bed turns blue. And it is, it's getting a really faint one faint little hue. All right, so we're gonna pr top stitch this side seam and I don't have the inseam done yet, so I'm just gonna do it like this. I'm gonna lift up and go through the leg here. They're chinos since they're not like a, a, a work pant or jeans, we're not gonna be flat felling the inseam or top stitching it. So this is kind of nice, we can actually top stitch the entire length of the side seam. Make sure you're not getting anything else. Your pocket bag isn't slipping from the back under here. If you're real, if this is really thick for you and you just, you're like, I don't want to go any further. Maybe you already sewed your inseam. Just stop at the bottom of the pocket bag here. You can stop there. That's generally where a lot of pants stop the top stitch on the side seam. Very long. <laughs> All right, let's do the other side. And this is the back. Yep, okay. You might even need some bar tack some of these high stress areas like your pocket openings. Chinos, you're not gonna generally see rivets. Okay, inseam. Now remember how we talked about on the inseam, we ease between those knee notches. And that is the case on these. I saw it in the instructions, so I wasn't lying. I wasn't pulling your leg. <laughs> Just kidding. So that knee notch is right here. So these should match perfectly. And then right when, I didn't, I didn't backstitch, I don't know why I was doing that. Right when you get up here, this is where you're gonna be easing between the knee notch on this leg and that leg, right? So your non-negotiable is your rise. So this is your halfway point and see we've top stitched the seams counter to each other so that there's no bulk here or less bulk. We'll pin this right here because this is our halfway point. It's not going to be much to ease. See that? You can't even tell. But also the, especially the back pant,
can kind of get kind of grow through there because there's so much of an angle with with that back crotch point across the thigh that you know there's a lot of bias there so it's also that's why it's not hard to ease this in because there's a lot of bias there this is a nice uh, transition sometimes you see patterns they don't have a very good transition there and then you're like clipping off the point. This is nice. Like I always say, you're, if you don't have a good transition, you're just gonna clip it off anyway. So do it at the pattern stage. Don't make me do it here at the machine. It just makes people doubt, you know? They start doubting, oh shoot, did I do something wrong? Why is this, the, this point here? All right, it's overlock. And this is the front leg, so I'm gonna surge on the front leg. threads towards the rise. This is a back, these are back stitch threads right here. Still don't want them. Now your back leg, you know, it's bigger. See, it's a little bigger. So make sure that doesn't like go like this. And then you surge it off, you know? Not funny. <laughs> surge these hems right now even though I'll probably won't use um, them for the hem I just don't want them to unravel while I'm waiting for my husband to try them on so I'm just gonna surge it while I'm here and this is the front right here so I want them to go that way Seam here's the end seam. If you're going to surge this this hem, I recommend making sure that your seam allowances are perpendicular to the edge or like flush, because you can actually you know make this so that you know you're you're not and it's either hanging down too low, you trim it off, and then it's pulling. It's doing this weird pulling thing. I feel like that's particularly dangerous with seam allowances that are pretty wide. All right, let's do the waistband. So we have one more thing to surge and it's on the waistband. Get our waistband out. There's one. Belt loops you need. Waistband. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of sewing first. I haven't cut my um, Ray. <laughs> you guys have all these really cute stickers. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Is that a pair? Thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you, Ray. I thought you already donated. You guys have all been donating so much. Where's the alert? Why is it taking so long? We want our cat. There it is. 
Yay, thank you. <laughs> All right, so we have our belt loops here. I'm gonna cut mine apart now. All right. Get these little threads into the seam allowance. We have a left and a right with a center back seam. Right and left. So this is your button and this is your buttonhole. So you're gonna sew it together at the center back seam. Now don't get these flipped, like just kind of be methodical about it. I'm gonna sew these two together. Oh shoot, look at that. This interfacing isn't sticking very good. All right, stay there. Stay there. <laughs> Pear. <laughs> it's kind of cracking me up. All right, we have this one. And then we have this one. Okay, and so if this is like this, this is the buttonhole, so that means that's the left. Oh, it's the left, but, oh yeah, yeah, those are the belt loops. Wait, 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 is this the waist? Yeah, so this is the right and this is the left, just like this. This is how you're wearing it, like that, okay? The reason you need to make sure of this is because you're gonna take the one that's on the inside and we're gonna overlock this bottom edge. All right, so don't get too confused. Did you right? Nice. Oh, yeah, Tammy, that's great. I didn't know that was both you. Night, Malin. I was just thinking you might sign off soon. Sleep well. Oops. I'm trying to keep track of my bottom edge here and I don't wanna lose it. Press your seam, seam, uh, center back seam open. Look at this, it's acting kind of funny because of the interfacing, I think. I don't like that. There's a notch right there. I can still see it though. Let me uh, look at this interfacing right here. See, it's kind of loose. Night, Julia. Thanks for stopping by and for the donation. Appreciate it. We're almost done. You won't miss anything. I'm waiting for that to heat up a little bit more. I'm gonna go get my other waistband and make sure, yeah, this one could use a press too. Sweet pea Tammy. When I sometimes watch Miriam, I'm watching her on my gaming account. <laughs> and I have to tell her who I am. I haven't watched her in forever. I assume she's still streaming, though. She's never streaming when I'm on Twitch. It's really rare. Probably because I'm streaming sometimes at the same time. I definitely, uh, when I fused the waistbands, I kind of shortchanged the time I did these because it was the last pieces and I was getting a bit like, okay, stream needs to start soon. Look at that, it's kind of doing funky stuff though. 
All right. Okay. Let's do this. All right, so next we're going to attach the belt loops to the top edge of the waistband. Now it's pretty easy to tell which waistband is which because you know that this is the inside waist because it's surged. You also know the surging goes down. And then by process of elimination, if you were to put these right sides together and match up the seam, you know that this is the top edge right here. All right. And then let's see, one, two, imagine three, four are the belt loops. Before five there, maybe there's a fifth one there. That's what it is. All right, so let's place these and we're gonna place them wrong side down. This is the outer waistband, so let's do that one. And then there's another one. Okay, two. And then there's one just past the center back seam right here. I've never done it like this. <laughs> And then there's must be one more. One, two. Let's do this. Right there. One, two, three, four, and then one at the back. Okay. Now, if you have if you top stitched your rise in a contrast color or maybe your pants are a much lighter color and you um, see the seam and then you see the top stitch, it's up to you what you consider the center back. So I know the seam at the center back is the center, but optically it might look weird if you put the belt loop centered over the seam and not, over your, not centered over the top stitch because sometimes the top stitch is more prominent and your eye thinks that's the center. It's up to you. Mine's invisible, so I'm just gonna do it, cover up the seam here, but you could bias this left and right a little bit to cover up that seam still, and, and, and then it maintain it looking, giving that optical illusion that it's centered. All right, so we're going to, I was looking for the seam, I just covered it up. All right, there we go. So now I would sew, yeah, I think, I think that's what I would do. I'm gonna check her how she does it. The, the way I would do this, I, I don't usually do the serge bottom. I do it a little differently. So I wanna make, I wanna do it the way she does it. Let's see here. All right, so we did that, we did that, we did that, we did that, we did that. All right, so now we're gonna sew that top edge together and understitch it. Wait, really? What is this, wait? <laughs> Meet the bottom edge of the inside waistband. Place the belt loops along top edge of the outside waistband. Place the wrong side of the belt loops against the right side of the waistband. Place the inside waistband on top and sew through all the layers along the top edge. Oh, I'm not sure what this stitch is right here. Oh, well, I think that's just the seam allowance. Okay, okay. All right, so we're just gonna sew along this top edge here, not the short ends. And you're gonna be enclosing your belt loop. So make sure your belt loops stay perpendicular to the waistband, okay? We don't need these. Maybe for your button and buttonhole placement, if you like. So what are you thinking about the complete sew through thing? I bet you guys like it. <laughs> it's probably getting pretty thick back here at that seam where the belt loop is. 
If it helps, you could press your seam allowances one direction and the other for offset them, but it, it's gonna be the same thickness. <laughs> it will help you get it lined up nicely because they'll nestle to each other. You're not too concerned about that when your belt loop covers up that seam. I have this weird little bump of interfacing right here, which made it look like I didn't sew it very straight. There we go. All right. So we still know that this is the inside because it has the surging. All right, don't inadvertently pull your zipper up and pull it off, the, the pull off, okay, be careful. All right, so you're gonna put your waistband right sides together. You're gonna hang off the short end of your waistband, about three eighths of an inch, your seam allowance here at the center front there. And now, do I have, do I have notches? Hmm, I'm gonna pin this. Cook dinner, oh yeah, you're, you're in Georgia, right? I'm like, I'm hungry. I'm gonna put the center back seam to the pant here. Don't think you catch the, the, uh, belt loops in the in the seam. I guess you could, but it just means your belt loops are gonna stick out, you know? I'm looking for notches, but I don't have any. I transferred all the notches there were. So there's, I think there's only a belt loop notches. All right, so here we have our waistband. So now remember we trimmed up the waistband edge before, before we did a few things. And that's so that we know that our waistband is gonna line up across from one, one another. <laughs> you're very unopinionated. I feel like you're more opinionated that I won't be streaming Saturday. Whoa, what happened? Oh, I just clicked something. What the heck? What? Oh, there we go. I clicked the mouse. All right, so make sure when you, you're at this other, uh, your right front, make sure you hang off your waistband, same seam allowance. Don't shortchange yourself there. All right, and now let's pin between here. This gets a little tricky because sometimes your waistband gets smaller, sometimes your waist of your pants gets bigger or smaller, you know? So you, you may find yourself easing things through. It's funny, I thought it would be the reverse. I thought the waistband would be too small. <laughs> Let's look at the whole thing here. Push all this away. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of find the halfway point here. I've been known when I'm sewing by myself to go like this. <laughs> Bite it. <laughs> at the halfway, I'm like, I need another hand. <laughs> Have you guys ever done that? <laughs> but you'd love it to see me do that. I'm like, okay, okay, I gotta get it. I need it, like, there's my halfway point. <laughs> All my secrets. That's how you get good. <laughs> okay. All right, so I have this pin in my zipper. I'm gonna take it out now. I'm not using a brass zipper so I can sew right through it, which is really nice for the first time in a long time. I don't have to worry about sewing through the teeth of my zipper, because in general, I'm always worried about that. All right, so let's get all this kind of situated and relaxed. Make sure that you're not catching your belt loops. Get all your seam allowances towards the raw edge. Try and be really even about this stitch. Makes your waistband look, you know, straight. 
and that it's not fluctuating in width. Ow, stop poking me. I was listening to an a interview this morning on the news, Terry, about a, oh, a Georgia family. Apparently they had lost a home, I think it was South Carolina, due to a flood. And, and even then they said they had built the house like up high. Never worried about flood, you know, and then they lost their home to flood. So then they, I think they took up temporary residence in Georgia. Ow! And they ended up falling in love with it. And now they're realizing it was in a fire prone area. I'm having a lot of trouble getting this to ease in there. Look at that. I really thought that it would be the opposite, that I would have the, um, the waistband would be too small because of the interfacing I, I ironed on there. <laughs> All right, do I just kind of move that a little bit? Let's see what's going to happen. I think that's going to be okay because of the belt loop. Maybe. Can I make it up over here? I may have a little tuck there. Sometimes when you're going along and you only have one layer of fabric and you're sewing it on a layer, on a piece that has like things like this, like the ridge of the pocket there, what'll happen is this will fall into that ridge and you'll get a tuck. So kind of you gotta, that'll happen. You just have to go back and fix it, but don't think that you did something wrong. That's probably what, what it was. What about me, Ray? Will you, if I come, will you, will you return me home fully trained on how to cook? I think my husband would appreciate that. I haven't cooked dinner in ages. I really need to pick it up. Oh, I'm gonna let a little more of this hang off. That's okay with me. All right, so now uh, I know you're really close to being done. And no one knows that more than I do since my, my stomach's like, you know, kind of hungry, a little hungry right now. But we are not going to skip the step where we make sure that our waist seam matches from left to right, right? <laughs> right here, see that? So right here, you wanna make sure that your waistband is going to line up across from each other. This is not one of my strongest areas. It's becoming stronger because I have done it wrong so many times, you know. Also make sure your waistband is sewn at the same width because this side looks a little wider than this one. And also note <laughs> that where this is sitting, the left front, it's way into the waistband. So it's not just right here. You're looking at like way over here. I like to look at it like this and see. Push your seam allowance the same direction so you're kind of comparing apples to apples. This is actually, I'm kind of shocked to keep looking at it, but it looks really good. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Maybe the pants are hungry too. All right, so now we're at the uh, top of, well, we're gonna pull the waistband flat to itself, right? And now we're going to sew this. So now when you're sewing these short ends, you wanna make sure you're getting a straight line. So now let's talk about a straight line. So parallel to your cut edge in general is a straight line, but the, only th the other thing to think about is, and this side's not a good example, but this side will be a better example, is you want it really in line with the pants, right? Ah, oh, thanks for subscribing, Misagi. Sorry, I got startled. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> oh, we're almost done with these pants. So you see the line right here of your center front rise? So say that this wasn't very straight, and that happens to me. You know, like sometimes these aren't very straight um, for whatever reason, and 
you sew your waist seam now parallel to this edge, but then it looks like it goes in at the top, you know, like it's going like this. You know, you don't want your pants to do that, right? I'm exaggerating it. <laughs> but, um, you know, so try and get it in line with your fly. That's more import important. So even if it looks unparalleled to that, it'll look way better if it's nice line. And you can even, you know, if you want, draw it on there. I never do this, but why not, right? Look at that. All right, so let's see. Does she turn this edge up when she does this part? I think so. Ooh. There's not 87 steps on this pattern. Terry. Nice, Misaki. I hope I'm saying your name right. I'm still learning too, but I've been sewing a while. Um, so let's see. No. Yeah, wait. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty subtle. Turn the waistband right side out. Iron the seams to curve the hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I think I will fold this up a little bit like this. So I'm going to fold the surged edge up because if I didn't, it would look like, let's just see, what would it look like, right? It would be hanging straight down from this waist, right? And you don't really want this hanging straight down. You kind of want it to be bent back like that. So it's kind of out of the way. So if I fold it up at the seam line, this is what I get. It'll be like this, right? And then we're just gonna let it hang down here when we go to top stitch it. Okay. Ah, okay, Terry. So yours has 87 steps. It's Vogue. What do you expect? <laughs> so the, what was the other thing? I've also thought of another thing. So sometimes, I'm trying to think. Actually, maybe this little technique I've thought of won't matter on this one. Yeah, I don't think it matters on this one. I would kind of like to see this turned up. I would like to sew it from this side. All right. That's better. Get all this nice and flat. Pull your waistband. Make sure it's all nice and flat. All right. You can even see that this one is a little shy and that's okay. Better in the seam allowance than pulling, right? I'm gonna turn up that edge there. Oh, just to the right of this piece here, right here. See that? All these little threads, they're gonna get hidden inside there. All right, so let's trim our corner. Might want to reinforce it. Let's do this side now. If you don't get a, a line like in line with this zip, the fly shield, that's okay on this side because it's underneath, you're not gonna see it. I'm definitely going to reinforce this corner though because my back stitch was way over there. So let's reinforce it. Don't trim these yet. I know it's really tempting to. 
Uh, don't trim them yet because you might need that fabric if you need to redo something on your waistband. All right, so let's turn this to the right side. And turn our corners. Kind of rubbish at turning corners. I always kind of, you know, take shortcuts. All right. I'm gonna turn my pants right side out so I can still work on the inside of the waistband. <laughs> They're pretty spunky. <laughs> Ray is going to teach us um, cooking. She's gonna return us home fully fledged cooks. That's her promise. For the low, low price of, we get to live in Illinois, right? All right, so the nice thing about doing this kind of waistband where you've surged this edge is now you don't have to worry about turning this under and stitching it down on the inside perfectly. You wanna put your seam allowance up. What's going on here, Jeremy? Are we okay with that? I think we are except my belt loop's a little bit off center. <laughs> I'm gonna move my belt loop a little bit and if, make it look like it's in the center even though it's kind of off a little bit, right? I'm getting kind of warm. This is, my office gets so hot. There we go. No one will ever know that that center back seam is not on the center back. Cause you guys aren't gonna tell. I know where you live. Oh, cooks for you. Wait a minute. See, there's my seam, but when the butt loop belt belt loop is down, it'll look okay. Right. All right. So now you're gonna fuss, 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 fuss. I think uh, it's a good idea right now to iron this top edge. It'll make it a lot easier. You wanna go home and sew? Are you working in the office, Sydney? Are you back there? My daughter, Cricket? <laughs> if you're gonna teach her her favorite to-go foods, she's probably down. All right. Let's Iron this top edge here. Looking good. Wait, wait, do I have a tuck there? No, I forgot to check my waistband for any tucks or weirdness. Cause I felt like I had gotten one, but it looks okay. It's my lucky day. So make sure, yeah, like, see I'm pulling my pant that way, away. Getting this nice and crisp up here. You want that seam to be nice and, um, you know, your waistband to be nice and flat. We'll look at it from the right side before we do anything permanent. Stop it. Ah, 
ironing board would be kind of handy here. More and more I look at this, it looks black, not blue. You know, I think one thing I would probably do differently about this waistband is I would probably make, I would add a quarter of an inch seam allowance to the waist and to each side of the waistband. That way you don't have this gap right here. You see this big gap in the waistband? It, so then it kind of goes down there. I think a wider seam allowance here so you fill up your waistband would probably kind of make a nice finish. You know? That's just one thought I'm having because I can feel that. Oh, yours. Sydney's. Oh, yeah, Beatrice. Yeah. That's so cute. Yeah, you got to get them young, Ray. My daughter actually cooks way more than I did. <laughs> She's a good mix of us. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this side and we'll just give it a little bit of a press as well. And then we're gonna pin down the waistband. We only have, uh, I think, two stitches left and that is the stitching of the waistband and the belt loops. These look, these look really nice. I, I'm really pleased with how these are looking. This fabric is really excellent. Let's pull the seam more to the inside here. I'm, I am pleased. See, look how far my center back is off. I'm wrestling, man. Wrestling with this ironing board would be a little nice. It's always like this when I do the waistband. It's always awkward. All right. I'll pin, I think, over here at the machine. Yeah, she is a whiz with the names. Mine, Martina? No, no, no. She's moving to a different state. Good night, Susu. Sleep well. Thanks for coming. I've been to Illinois to visit my sister and to do a show there. Thinking about, see how this right here, I don't want this little bump to show from the inside. What could I do? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this. It's kind of unconventional, but let's try it. Back stitch. Jeez, I thought I was about to sew my finger. All right. I just wanted to get that there. It does show, but it only shows on the inside. I could probably hammer it too. All right, so. I'm really fiddling with this right here. This is non-negotiable. All right, so make sure all this is nice and flat. There's two Martinas. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, it's still gonna cover up my label. I forgot because we're doing this style, I should just stick it there. Womp womp. All 
All right. Okay, now I know. I don't have to do this. I gotta remember that when I do this style waist, I don't have to put on, put on my label until I'm stitching it down here. And I can just stitch this down right now. Let's just, let's stitch this down right now. Let's see, where's the center though? It's more like right here. Yeah, that's so crazy. You guys look close together like that. I will say that the advantage to the seam allowance being three eighths only is that the amount that hangs below the waistband is less. So if this was a five eighths inch seam, it really hangs down kind of far, too far. We did that style of waistband what was it on the aims? And I, I feel like I remember that thinking that it just hangs down way too far. So you can offset it though. You can have one waistband with the three eighths at the waist seam. This is kind of driving me crazy. <laughs> you know, oh God. Ha. Oh, uh, Terry, uh, Martin, the other Martina, Martina is mama of 13. Hi, Michelle. How's it going? You live near Ray too. Oh my goodness. Ray's going to have to host a sewing meetup, I think. So now you can, you're going to get to sew this from the right side and you don't have to worry about, you know, catching this in perfectly because it's just flat in there, right? Been lurking. I lurk a lot too. All right, so the last probably unconventional thing I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna start my stitching at the center back or thereabouts. Like, yeah, I'm gonna start center back. That way you don't have the back stitch at the center front fly seam. I don't really like having my back stitch right there. There's a lot of reasons for it. One of them is the thickness can be kind of too thick to do a back stitch on some machines. Like it'll kind of give you trouble. The other is if you want to adjust your waistband and you have to remove a back stitch there, it's kind of a sensitive visually area, right? You might, you might notice any mishaps with the ye old seam ripper, you know? So I think it's really good to kind of get it out of there. Plus it's just looks really clean when you don't have back stitches there. And you can just, I'm just going to do this whole waistband right now, all the way around starting at that center back and there's going to, it's going to look like invisible, right? There's going to be no back stitches there. Can you guys see okay? You want me to, I'm going to brighten up a little bit since we're on the home stretch. Ooh, Ray. Look how bright this is. I'm going to blind you guys. Wait a second. I'm not going to do this. There. I have the brightness so far up right now. I don't have the light on above me too. You ask your friend to make a proposal idea. Ooh. I asked uh, Hearts if we could have a meet up there and they were down for that. So if you're going over your brass zipper, be careful. I don't have to worry about mine. It is pretty thick right here, I'm not gonna lie. We're just gonna tread cautiously. All right, so now we're gonna thread the needle here, so to speak. 
the pants are going to go under the machine head. I really got to work on my waistband points. I have no excuse. <laughs> get rid of these pins so they don't poke us. This part's pretty easy except for the fact that you have the bulk of the pants underneath and so now we have fully done one half of the waistband because we're back at the center. And we're gonna do this front here. You can't take these pins out yet. And you notice I'm keeping this whole pant flat. Like I'm really stretching it here and trying to keep it, you know, as flat as possible under there and keep things, you know, because it's really easy. You're looking at the pants sideways and you don't want to like pull them in a weird way to kind of get them off kilter. No pressure, but now you're approaching the more visible side of your fly. Why is it, did I lose my little point here? I thought I had one point that was kind of nice. There we go. Come on, don't do that. There we go. It feels like I have a pin stuck under there. It's like your machine's giving birth to your pants. Kinda is, huh? You're cooking gold. <laughs> Dang, Michelle. <laughs> I think one of the drawbacks of doing it this way where I do it in a big box is that, you know, you could get some drag lines across. So make sure that you're not getting those. Oh, really? Weston, I oh, wow. Oh, God, there's a lot of you in Iowa. Iowa and Sweden. Those are the hotbed of so-so fans. <laughs> you want to come to California? Good night, Ursula. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Sleep well. Ooh, I think I ran a bobbin thread. What, what was that? What was that noise? Did I really run out of bobbin thread at the very end? I did. Wow. Oh. I didn't wind another one, but I have, I have one that has a little left. Don't I? We took it out earlier. That's gray. Is this blue? You guys, I cannot tell. Maybe I should turn the light on. Here in Vermont. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of... Good night, Martina. Yeah, Vermont is pretty far away from all those. I don't think I've been to Vermont. Like not, I haven't, sorry, I haven't been there like intentionally, you know, not intentionally, but that wasn't my final destination. I've been to Maine. I think I drove through Vermont, right? Oh, my geography is terrible. Sorry, my presser foot's going on up and up, and down, up and down. Let me 
make sure I didn't get some weird. I did get a few, it's like an inch of weird stitches here. There we go. All right, where was this? Literally, I had five inches left. <laughs> oh, yeah, that may not have. <laughs> okay, so let's, should we see how it looks? Okay, maybe that looks okay, actually, yeah. And this is the other side. Oh, wait, what's this? What's this? Dang. Now I'm going to have a back stitch right there. Remember I felt that funny thing right there? That's what that was. So my seam allowance fell down into the pant. Well, that's rude. That's so rude. This is what I'm talking about. You don't want to be removing stitches right here because especially with things like denims that have um, different colored threads to make up their weave. You can pull that one that's white. Good night, Sue. And then you will, you know, it'll, it'll show. And some fabrics just can't handle being seam ripped. I want to be done too. I want to go to bed now too. Very very, very carefully. Okay. There we go. Pushing it in there with my awl. Making sure. I feel like I want to get rid of some thickness or something. You know? I'm really pushing it in there. Okay, that looks better. Sheesh. <laughs> All right, so I think that that was, let's see how far back did it go? Here we go, I can see it now. There, there to there. Luckily, this is a pair of pants where my thread matches really well that I won't see. Okay. We have our belt loops. Good thing we inspected that. If you're doing denim with these white threads, I like to get rid of all the white threads and then fold it down and, you know, do your bar tack or your top stitch, whatever you're gonna do. Make sure it's perpendicular to the waist. I'm gonna do a couple of rows. I can barely see my thread. A couple, of, I'm just gonna reinforce it a little bit. Like that. And then you can stitch this one too down, you know, like into the waistband. I probably could have done that when I did my top stitch around. I don't know why I didn't think to do that. That's funny. I've done that before. Make sure you get a per it perpendicular. Don't like angle it. It's really easy because you're looking at your pants sideways to you. You know? All right, so I won't be here next week. I'm not streaming. I will have a few uploaded videos for you guys. I've been working hard doing that. Um, I have a Friday sews tomorrow. And 
And then next Saturday's Patreon Zooms move to this Saturday. It's only five people, so I'm not sure. I know Ray's here. Kind of rethinking the two stitches. I feel like I gotta do it up there too, but I'm not going to. All right, so. So you could do bar tacks on the bottom belt loop, you know, down here if you want. Remember, get rid of these white threads. They'll just come out anyway and you'll see them. You know, you'll see them poking out of your belt loop. You know what I'm talking about. All right, don't catch pocket bags that you shouldn't be catching. Oh, I'm about to stitch through my face. There we go. With the label. <laughs> There we go. I think I did that last time, but I didn't this time. Two more, two more. Get rid of all these threads. Get rid of the white threads. I'll go back and trim my threads a little nicer later. rid of these all this messy thread stuff that's what makes your stuff look kind of you know home sewn all right last belt loop I'll try and put the button and buttonhole on later today I have to pull my home machine all the way over here, set it up, so sorry I don't do it on stream. I definitely have a few times. And I in my Instagram highlights, which you know I hardly have any of those, but <laughs> I do have a whole tutorial on marking and sewing buttons and buttonholes. That's kind of eye candy-ish. From when I did the plaid sage brush dress hack majiggy. Okay, we did it. <laughs> Your Wayne Hammer's birthday party versus Zoom. Oh, that's what it is, Ray. Oh, you should go to the birthday party. That's once a year, you know? Not, we, we'd hate to miss you, but at the same time. Okay. Okay, these look, these look actually really good. I'm happy with these. <laughs> oh, those look really nice. That's one of my best waistbands matching ever. My point's a little stretched out there, you know, that happens. look pretty good. Oh, these pockets are much roomier than the cargo. Good. Oh, I can't wait to see his little tush in these. This will be really cute. All right. Phew. No problem. Almost four hours, huh? Dang, it's really almost three o'clock. Well, shoot. Ah, you're, yeah, thank you, Misaki. Thanks for coming. Sleep well. I know it's probably late for, for a lot of you. <laughs> Thanks, Dar. Yeah, thank you.
Let's look at them inside out because that's, you know, we all want to see them that way, right? There we go. Thread. That's a thread from the jeans. This pocket fabric's pretty fun. A little overexposed. These, I, I'm really happy with how these turned out. This is some of my better sewing, I, I will admit. Let's hope they fit. Oh, I'm so glad you guys. Thanks. Thanks, Heidi. Thanks, Libby. Oh, sure, Lynn. Yeah. I'll probably start putting the finished garment pictures in the community tab here on YouTube. <laughs> Faster if I wasn't streaming, Terry. But yeah, I think that's it. But I wouldn't have gone this fast if I weren't streaming either. I would have just been chilling, watching a movie. Probably would have taken about the same, yeah. Crazy, crazy that people want their jeans to cost $20 when it takes that long. I've wanted them to cost, be cheap too. I, I, I'm there, you know. I'm not saying I'm not, haven't been that way. <laughs> really, it was when I was like, I don't want to stay this size forever, so I don't want to spend a lot on pants. You know. Just looking for all my belt loop threads, back stitches. You know, I'm pretty sure this fabric's black. I could have used black thread, and I, I think I would have been happier with that. Blue makes it look like I didn't have the right thread color. It's very subtle. But you look at that, the camera really picks it up because it's overexposed. I think it's black. I designed this fabric, Michelle. These are, these are just samples I didn't know what to do with, you know? They're not, it, this isn't printed correctly, and so it looks fine here, but it's not what I wanted, and so I um, have updated the fabric. It's all my spoon flower thing, but God, it does make a really good pocket bag. Oh, here, look at all these. Slurp, slurp, as my friend and I would say. We want to get rid of those. Okay. All right. Cool. Woo, woo. That was my, my high 10. <laughs> yeah, there's big dots. I think you saw this earlier, Sydney. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Ray. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, the, it's crazy that people want you to sew them for free. Yes, I know, so true. They want you to sew them for free and they don't want to pay for good fabric. All right. All right. Do we have any fun labels? Don't we have some like fun labels in here? Huh. Oh, here's something. Made with love and swear words. There is a swear word right there. I have another one. These are the last of my labels. I'm gonna have to get more probably by the end of the year. Hmm. Oh well. Oh, here's another one. Needle Sharp sometimes includes these. I have three so far. My hands are blue. Made with love and flare words. I've never used one of these. I have enough seam allowance that I could do that. This one looks better though. Nice, Megan. <laughs> I think I'll do that. All right, 
I have to hand sew it on because it's white and I have blue thread on. This is black thread. Cool. Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks for all the donations. You guys were awesome. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm not streaming next week, but there'll be some uploaded videos. So if you turn no notifications on, it will tell you when I'm live. Um, if you like what you see, subscribe. Like the video below. You guys always ask. I'm going to ask for you guys today. Our chat's always saying it. The darker one, Tammy? I think so, too. He'll like that. It looks better. Oh, thanks, Martina. It's just time. You know, I will, I, the only thing I will say, you know what I'm naturally good at is spatial stuff. That's, that's what helped my sewing. I'm just really good at thinking about things inside out. And I used to be better before I had a kid. That whole thing of like your math and some of those skills kind of diminishing when you're pregnant, it was very true for me. <laughs> like I just started being like, I can't think of that when I was pregnant and the same after I had her. So um, that's, and, and so I like to sew and I've been sewing a while. So that's, that's the only reason I've gotten good. And I make mistakes still. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm not good. I'm not streaming next week, but I'll have some uploaded videos, Rebecca. Oh, you're having surgery. Good luck with your surgery. I hope you a really good recovery, thorough, fast, but thorough. So, um, and then I'll be back the following week and we're going to be doing an epic project. We're going to be doing the utility jacket by Wardrobe by Me. And if you guys, you know, are interested in making the chinos, remember that there's this, um, she was really nice in giving you guys this little code. No one ever does that for you guys, except for Hearts and Helen's Closet, right? I'm gonna pull up the Wardrobe by Me utility jacket. Let's look at it really quick. Here it is. Do I have a microphone? There we go. So we're making this. <laughs> this is an epic one. Um, holy moly. Who picked this out? There's not much detail on the back. Ooh, I love that contrast stitching. Handsome, yeah. Banana lining. All right, we need a fun lining. Oh, look at that. Wow. They zigzagged cord in there. Very interesting. So it looks like men and women are making it or straight and curvy. That looks cute lining. Oh, that's kind of cute. Look at that. So I was thinking of skipping the waist casing, but I don't see anyone who did that. Is there like a, oh, that's cute. Well, that one's cute. This is kind of be kind of how my husband's looks because it's a navy blue solid. Oh, that's nice with the red. Um, this is nice. I like this as some inspiration. The red is really sharp. That's cute too. I missed this one here. I'm not a big fan of those epaulets. Oh, look at that. That looks store bought. One more. Oh, I, I love the white top stitching. Oh, I hope this is another picture of that one. Oh, it's not. I want to see this one more. Look at the white. Ooh. Rebecca, you can catch him on <laughs> Oh my gosh. Hi, Debbie. We're just finishing. It was not 87. Yeah, that one is 87 steps. I think you are absolutely right. Um, I love this white top. Oh my gosh. I am. Don't know what I'm doing here. I love the white top stitching of this. Okay, this isn't working out for me. <laughs> oh, it's a zigzag. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, where are you guys? Here you are. Those red accents were very nice. He looks like Paul Hollywood. Who's that? 
Bye, Dar. You taking off? See ya. Bye, bye Sydney. Yes, <laughs> my spatial skills suck. Well, I think it's just learned sometimes too. I can, I, I'm good at parallel parking. But if you were to tell me how far away is that tree over there, I'd be like, I don't know, five feet. You know, I'm not very good about that distances. I could guess, but it would be in yards. And and if you ask me a football term, forget it. So, yeah. Anyway, these turned out great. I'm super thrilled with them. Can't wait to try them on. I'm gonna go find a fun button. So thanks you guys. I will see you guys soon and um, have a great week off without me. Happy sewing. I'll still be, you'll still see me on Instagram and junk. So, oh, great British bake off. Okay, cool. All right, you guys, I'll see you guys later.